go. That's right, everybody. You are here, ready for yet another Drama Mama investigation. We're ready to dig in and help you get caught up. That's what Drama Mama is all about, yeah? You come here to find out what the hell is going on. I'm here to tell you what the hell is going on. So we got our Drama Mama theme song, ready to do an investigation. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. Here, on Drama Mama. All right, everybody. Hello, 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 and welcome, current and future Drama Mama viewers. Uh, this is the part of the show where we dive deep into a drama, and we figure out what's going on. See, with all of the wild stuff that's always going on on the internet, it's really, really easy to find yourself out of the loop. But that's why we do Drama Mama here. See, here on Drama Mama, we dig down deep, we get all the receipts, we figure out what the heck's going on in a situation, and then at the very end, once we've figured out what's actually happening, then we give our takes on it. Now, you may know that in the past, we've done some pretty significant Drama Mamas. We've done a Drama Mama about the uh, Ray Fisher situation, which included wild wild things like a completely fake frosty the snowman movie that was seemingly made up just to distract from uh the racial discrimination allegations that were brought up against uh dc uh dc movie studios we've done a drama mama on uh major political figures um including um the um including the ridiculous uh family situation um by former Trump press secretary. Um, I can't even remember her name right now. That was so long ago. Oh my God. We've also done drama mamas on the Will Smith situation. And today we're talking about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Because as it turns out, the relationship um, between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and their ongoing divorce um, has become one of the most, one of the most longest running and confusing stories that, uh, that is sort of uh, filled our social media timelines in recent days. It is... So oh, yes, Kellyanne Conway. Thank you. I completely forgot her name. Um, it's been going for a really long time. Oh, yeah, we did the we did the Drama Mama investigation into Prostasia. We've done many, many Drama Mama investigations, and I think you'll be quite impressed with the, uh, the history of our amazing Drama Mamas. Regardless, today we're talking about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. And boy, oh boy, do things get really weird. Now, some of you may know that the Johnny Depp Amber Heard court hearings are an, are currently ongoing. I believe we're on the third or fourth day of hearings at the moment, and these are expected to go on for some time. Um, in short, we're likely to get another update on this as time goes on, but... We need people to be in the loop. Otherwise, no one's going to know what we're talking about for us to do an update on. So everybody's talking about it. Everybody's giving their takes on it. And I, I, I just, I don't know. I needed to share with you the real story behind it because everybody can give a take. Everybody can give a take on whatever comes across their timeline. But it takes a real demon. Me, demon mama. It takes a real demon to dig in and figure out exactly what's actually going on and then give a take on it that's not just uninformed drivel, okay? That's why I'm doing it, because I have a big brain. That's the real reason. So if you're ready for the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow, if you're ready for the story of Johnny Depp, Captain Jack, Davy Jones, Black Pearl, if you're ready, Pirates of the Caribbean, you're ready. We're ready for this, okay? But, um... I want to warn everybody in advance, okay? <laughs> Davy Jones, giant squid. That's right. Um, I want to warn everybody in advance. This is going to get really, really messy, okay? So we're going to talk about some pretty extreme stuff during this segment. Um, this segment is going to be a longer one. All drama mamas are a bit on the longer end because we dig through all the stuff. We go through everything. Now, 
before we get into the real history of this, I wanted to mention something, which is that, you know, on this channel, sometimes we talk about celebrity issues. My channel tends to, um, you know, fo focus on a little bit the more serious side of things. But in Drama Mama, you know, we delve into the celebrity news, the gossip, the uh, drama. We, dr we, we go into the lighter stuff, um, but always with a purpose. And one of the things that I think that this whole drama really, really illustrates is sort of the fickleness of, uh, of invocations of social justice causes, the fickleness of internet people to uh, bandwagon on seeming social justice causes, and the inability of people to be patient in giving their takes. And uh, as we go through some of the more harrowing details of this entire uh, uh, wild, messy breakup, you're going to see what I'm talking about. But just keep in mind, first of all, there's a lot of important stuff we're going to talk about in connection to this, even if it's not directly involved. And secondly, there's a lot of graphic shit involved in this. We're going to be talking about abuse. We're going to be talking about severe abuse. We're going to be talking about uh, spousal abuse, parental abuse, um, financial abuse, a lot of abuse, okay? So just keep that in mind. I'm not going to put content warning tags up or anything. I'm just letting you all know in advance, okay? So let us go to the beginning, all right? Everybody, let's go to the very beginning of all of this. And that story, our story begins in the ancient period of 2009. Do you guys remember 2009? I was just finishing up high school in 2009. 2009 was the beginning of the era of rage faces and troll comics and redditing and all of that stuff, okay? Um, it was a, a wild, wild time. Well... In 2009, early 2009, um, a movie was being made that was called The Rum Diary, okay? And this was a movie that had both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard uh, on, on the, uh, as major, major uh, actors on the production. And that's where they met. Now, so this film was filming for a while, but it seems to be where they met and started off their romance. 2009, The Rum Diary. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard meet and appear to hit it off into a the beginning of a, let's say, cataclysmic romance. Over the holidays in the year of 2012, so, you know, about a, about about two years later, um, two and a half years, give or take, depending on when their relationship began, they started their engagement. Now, you all might know this, but in Hollywood, uh, 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 celebrity engagements don't tend to be very long. Um, when people in Hollywood get married, they tend to get married really quick. They tend to make a big deal about it. It tends to be a big, a big explosive thing. They all get lots of publicity. It's super, super good. People blab, blabber about it. There's lots of, lots of, you know, um, paparazzi and, and, uh, and all the celebrity magazines, all the tabloids start talking about it and everything like that. But that was not the case with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. With Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, they were actually um, engaged for like a like almost two years. No, actually, sorry, almost three years. So o over the holidays in 2012, they got engaged. And then it wasn't until February of 2015 that they actually got married. And they got married at his house in a civil uh, ceremony. And in fact, this was a really big deal. When this happened, um, some of the biggest uh, sort of lifestyle and celebrity news magazines reported on this. Here's an example of what was being written about at the time. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard tie the knot. The stars held a civil ceremony Tuesday evening at their Los Angeles home, a source confirms. This was written by People Magazine. This was a, a major article at the time. Lots of photos. As you can see, look at this. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard made it legal at their home in Los Angeles on Tuesday. As previously reported, a bigger wedding is still to come this weekend on Depp's private island, Little Hall's Pond K in the Bahamas. Depp 51 and Heard 28 got engaged over the holidays in 2012 after meeting on the set of 20 of 2011's The Rum Diary. Now, already you can see where this is going to get a little bit spicy, okay? 
So first of all, anytime there is any sort of celebrity marriage, there is always, like I said, a big buzz about it because two famous people who all have their own fans are getting married and all of their fans are going, ooh, I'm excited about this. Ooh, I'm angry. All the parasocial, excited, uh, spectacle nonsense comes out. And this is even for their private ceremony. They got a big article published in one of the most popular magazines in the country, just for the private one. And of course, they're planning, you know, a bigger ceremony, a huge deal, all this stuff. And immediately, you start to see the first, the first cracks. Anytime celebrities get married, there is always lots of discourse, but especially so when one of the people getting married is 28 and the other one is 51. That is a, a 20, 23 year age gap. Um, now, some people have a big problem with that. And there's always, by the way, there's always dialogue about this. Some people um, see any sort of age gap or, or see any sort of large age gap like that as a um, red flag immediately. Now, I don't think it's that simple. Um, I think that there are such things. There is things that need to be considered when there's any sort of age gap. And I think that there are absolutely problematic age gaps. For example, uh, people who are under the age of 18 um, and anybody over the age of 18 is extremely problematic, obviously. And I think that there are some very risky things with people who are particularly young and people who are particularly old. Now, 28 to me, that's an adult. That is somebody who, you know, in all likelihood knows their entire life. They know what they want. They know what they're getting. They more, any, any more than any other adult does. So I personally don't really care all that much about a 51 to 20, 28 year old age gap. However, a lot of people, of course, are going to fixate on that. And as you will see as this sort of story goes on, this age gap will um, serve as a, a piece of evidence, let's say, against Johnny Depp in that it appears somewhat stereotypical, right? Um, every single person on the planet knows the story. Older guy, young woman, old guy uses power and money and influence to control the life of the young woman. A, unfortunately, a story as old as time. However, assumptions can make an ass out of you and me. And as it turns out, everybody else. So without any spoilers, just keep that in mind. Keep in mind that the, the problematic age gap between these two adults, mind you, there was no pedophilia or anything like that going on here. It's just a age gap that's rather large between two already famous and already rich celebrities. Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, yeah. Um, of course, yes. Vermin, Vermin says, there is also an issue when it becomes a pattern for an older person always dating like 18 or 19 year olds when they're 30 plus. Yeah, I would think that's very, that's to me, incredibly sus. If you see somebody always just waiting at the door for people to turn 18 or looking for people who are 19, I think that indicates a very unhealthy fixation that, in my opinion, is a genuine red flag. But I don't think, I think that some people are uh, a little bit personally squicked out about age differences, and therefore they sometimes give someone an, a red flag unfairly. I don't think it's in and of itself a 51 a 51 year old dating a 28 year old is like a is a red flag age gap of any type personally. Um and that's just because I think that like adults can be with adults that are older than them. Adults can be with adults that are younger than them. Some people really like older guys, some people really like older women, and as long as there's not any abuse going on there, I don't think that in and of itself it's necessarily a red flag. However, some people don't believe that way, and we'll see how that comes into uh, into play as this story goes on. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Luxander. Um, but let's continue, okay? So, in so in in twenty in early twenty fifteen, they got married. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard get married. In twenty sixteen, two years later, um, Johnny Depp's mother dies. Now, this is for a lot of people. Uh, a sort of, some people see this as the turning point 
in their whole relationship. And it's really hard to tell if that is true or isn't true. We're going to probably find out a little bit more of that as we get into the, like, current court stuff. But um, Johnny Depp had a very complicated relationship with his family. And this is something we're going to see a lot of as we progress through this story, is that Johnny Depp's parent uh, relationship with his parents and with his mom were, let's just say, very unhealthy, okay? They were not good. Um, and so when Johnny Depp's mother died, it, was, it hit him emotionally very strongly. So literally, within a day of this, um, this was literally the day after Johnny Depp's mother died. Um, there was a allegedly, okay, um, Amber Heard released a or or uh, had a a restraining order filed on Johnny Depp, and this is what was alleged to happen. Okay, Amber claims Johnny Depp began obsessing over something that wasn't true and became extremely angry, eventually throwing a cell phone striking her her cheek and her eye with extreme force. Heard then claimed that Depp continued screaming at me, pulling my hair, striking me, and violently grabbing at my face. After uh, Amber Heard's friend Ra Raquel Pennington uh, entered the apartment, Johnny Depp picked up a magnum-sized bottle of wine that he'd been drinking out of and started swinging it around the house like a weapon, smashing everything that he could. Now, um... Amber Heard's friend, Pennington, Raquel Pennington, supported this description of events. And we're going to read through this claim because this is where the trouble really, really gets. Okay? Let me break. Let me. This is where it really begins. So I think it's important that we get these things figured out. So here's an article from five years ago. A Los Angeles judge has granted a restraining order against Johnny Depp from his estranged wife, Amber Heard, who has accused him of domestic violence, court documents show. The documents filed on Friday by lawyers representing Heard state that Johnny Depp violently attacked Heard on Saturday night in their penthouse. So this would have been, uh, this was done on Saturday, May 28th. So this would have been literally, the alleged incident occurred the night, the night of the death of, of Johnny Depp's mother. Photographs submitted to the court show that her showed Heard with a large bruise on her face as well as broken bottles, picture framed, and shattered glass on the floor. On Saturday evening, according to a statement from Heard filed on Friday in support of the restraining order, Depp began obsessing over something that wasn't true, became extremely angry. We just read that. Um, a separate statement from Pennington also submitted to the court supports Heard's description of events, alleging that Johnny Depp swung the magnum of wine like a baseball bat. An opposing document filed by Depp's lawyers claims that Amber is attempting to secure a premature financial res resolution by alleging abuse and states that Depp is unable to attend the hearing and has not heard the specific allegations against him. On Monday, Heard filed for divorce from Depp and is seeking spousal support from the Oscar-nominated actor to whom she was married for just over a year. The document also alleges two other incidents of violence by Johnny Depp in the past six months, including one in April on Heard's birthday in which Depp threw a magnum-sized bottle of champagne at the wall and a wine glass at her, then grabbed her by her hair and shoved her to the floor. In her statement, Heard said that during the entirety of our relationship, Johnny has been verbally and physically abusive to me. I endured excessive emotional, verbal, and physical abuse from Johnny Depp, which has included hostile, angry, humiliating, and threatening assaults to me whenever I questioned his authority or disagreed with him. Documents also show that the couple split a day before the divorce filing, very soon after the death of May uh, uh, on twentieth on the twentieth of May of Depp's mother Betty Sue Palmer after a long illness. Depp and Heard recently made headlines for a dispute with Australian authorities, including the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Agriculture, after Heard brought the pair's dogs into the country without first quarantining them, breaking the country's strict biosecurity laws. Unrelated. In this, as a part of that case, Depp and Heard were forced to make an apology video, which uh, that is hilarious in and of itself. Okay, so you now understand what the inciting incident of all of this was. Some of you may remember when this originally happened. Again, this was um this was all the way back in 2016. I remember when this news broke. I remember when how wild everything was. I remember watching this stuff on news shows um, at the time. I used to watch Majority Report at the time. I remember Chapo talking about this. I think it was Chapo that was talking about this. Anyway, 
this was a huge deal and a lot of people were like holy shit johnny depp the lovable pirate guy the the dude from all of the um all of the um all the tim burton films oh my god johnny depp is like beating beating the shit out of his wife that's fucked up that's so fucked up okay so there was a huge reaction to it now um of course on the 23rd uh, they, there was a filing for divorce. And then on eight, on the 18th, there was the, the, um, or sorry, sorry, on the 28th, my apology. Then there was the, um, uh, the, the restraining order filed. And remember, it's very important right here. Remember that Johnny Depp claimed Amber is attempting to secure a premature financial resol resolution to their divorce by alleging abuse. And Depp was unable to attend the hearing on this matter and has not heard Amber's specific allegations against him. That's very odd. But notice that from the very beginning, Johnny Depp has claimed that he did not do any of the things alleged of him. Okay, keep that in mind. Anyone remember the Casey Anthony trial? I do remember that. I was going to mention that. Um, in fact, this is as good as as good enough of a time as any to talk about the sort of history of celebrity court trials. Um, everybody knows crime is exciting, right? We love crime movies. Real, uh, like, uh, crime television is one of the most popular genres of television. Crime, the justice system, all of these things are very, very fascinating to lots and lots of people. And there have been, over the course of time, a number of, um, let's call them celebrity court trials that have that have reached a level of fame that they are almost inescapable. Um, some, some of these are, uh, the Casey Anthony trial is one of those. Uh, it is a trial where the people in, where the trial was so shocking and became such a public spectacle that it was being run on, on television stations all the time. Constant updates for the Casey Anthony style. Um, there's another one, which was, uh, another, uh, uh, another court trial that reached sort of celebrity status was the, uh, John Benet, John Benet Ramsey. Yep, John Benet Ramsey is another one. Jody Arias, um, O.J. Simpson, um, is an, these are a whole bunch of examples of of celebrity trials that reached that that were either already involving a celebrity or the people involved became a celebrity over time. Um, and honestly, this particular case is has reached that level as well, where right now you cannot like there is no escaping. Um, there was no escaping whatsoever the, uh, the sort of coverage of this event. Uh, I don't think they ever did go fully to trial, but there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of, um, wind up around an investigation around the Ramsey, Ram Ramsey, uh, the John, John Benet Ramsey story. Um, it got reopened in Germany. That makes sense. Um, so there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of cases like this. Um, a lot of, yeah, it. But again, um, oh, I mean, God, of course, and don't forget, don't forget, like the uh, the the mother of all celebrity trials, the the uh, uh, the Charles Manson, right? The whole Charles Manson thing was like the original one because everyone involved in that was a celebrity. Everybody killed there pretty much was a celebrity or tied to celebrities. Uh, Michael Jackson is another one. Michael Jackson's out the allegations against Michael Jackson. So the thing is that every once in a while, there's a court story that reaches a level of fame and notoriety that it's almost unavoidable. And again, this one, this one is, is, is one of the biggest ever. Um, the original clip and ship in clip and ship was at the Manson trials. Yeah. The Manson trials were off the rails. And of course, OJ Simpson was wild as well. Um, Now, I don't think that this trial is ever going to get that big, but it is pretty fucking big. And you're going to find out as we go on exactly why. So the starting, the, 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 the foundation of all of this is this allegation of abuse. Okay? So, here we go. This is the next step, okay? So, on June 8th of 2016, this is, uh, uh, you know, um, it is, it is less than a month after the um, the restraining order was filed. We have a, uh, a, a article published by Tillett Wright, which is called why I called nine one one. 
um, Tillett Wright alleged that he visited Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp's house and, and oversaw some of this. Okay. And we're going to get right into this. I'm going to read this article as to what was, um, what was called or, or what was, uh, what was claimed here. Okay. Let's do this. Why I called 911, um, by IO Tillett Wright. Okay. I called 911 because she never would. Because every time it happened, her first thought was about protecting him. Because every time it happened, the sweet, loving man we all cared for so much would come back with apologies, profuse, swearing up and down that he understood how bad what he had done was and swearing to never do it again. We all loved him, but especially, especially her. And she wanted to believe that the behavior wasn't going to last. The reports of violence started with a kick on a private plane, and then it was shoves and the occasional punch, until finally in December she described an all-out assault and she woke up with her pillow covered in blood i know this because i went to their house i saw the pillow with my own eyes i saw the busted lips and the clumps of hair on the floor i got the phone call immediately after it happened her screaming and crying a stoic woman reduced to sobs i understood her heartbreak he had been my friend too a person i loved very much a person i had once referred to as a brother person with whom I had laughed at the absurdity of the media and their spicy claims about my role in their family. A person who came to my rescue in my darkest hour, who I have credited with saving my own life, who I lived with for a year by his invitation while I healed and worked. I knew him to be soft and gentle with a temper and a dark side, but a golden heart. I didn't want to believe it either until I saw the wreckage. When you call someone your brother, you also commit to calling them out when they're wrong. As she, shaking and crying, described this 195-pound man throwing the full weight of his body into a into headbutting his 120-pound wife in the in the in the face in a fit of rage, I found that an unforgivable line in my heart that had been crossed. I witnessed firsthand the absolutely baffling mental pretzel that an abused person puts themselves into, trying to balance the desire to protect the aggressor with the knowledge that their swollen face is unacceptable. I listened as she cycled through things she could have possibly done to provoke him or how she could have made him upset to do this. I sat and listened, my own heart aching because I had so much care for the tender, generous man inside of all this rage. And yet, the bottom unequivocal line is, nothing she could have ever said or done deserves what she describes as him dry dragging her up the stairs by the hair, punching her in the back of the head, choking her until she almost passed out, and smashing his forehead into her nose until it almost broke. We say domestic violence is bad. We condemn it. But as a culture, we create the most fertile be breeding ground for it to thrive. The cycle of abuse is perpetuated by every person who asserts that the victim more likely punched themselves rather than addressing the very real evidence of violence in front of them. The culture of victim blaming is the very thing that protects abusers' ability to get away with this type of behavior. Right now, every battered woman in the world is watching this media circus, internalizing the message that when they come forward for help, when they break the cycle, they will be called a gold digger, a cheater, and be accused of having faked it all for attention. I'm looking at every journalist, every editor, every person who puts a comment on an article pointing pointing an uneducated finger. You are the lynch mob. You are a deafening chorus. Your searching for an explanation for why he would have hit her sends the clear message that there can be a reason why someone hits their spouse. It doesn't matter what was said between two lovers. It doesn't matter if the romance was coming to an end because nothing warrants that response. No person ever should suffer violence at the hands of the person they love. I watched a woman with a broken spirit go on national television the next night, covered in makeup, smiling through a bloody lip, who nearly jumped out of her seat when someone casually put a hand on her shoulder because she didn't know what was coming. That's why, when it happened again, when I was back on the phone with both of them and I heard it drop, heard him say, what if I pulled your hair back, and her scream for help, I wondered, like so many times before, if I should break the code of silence that surrounds celebrities and invite the police into the situation. And in a split sick second i decided yes i was going to because i realized that as long as i was protecting the abuser from consequences i was enabling the abuse and i could no longer partake i had to stand up for my friend and for what i believe in my gut to be the code of conduct by which human beings have to behave with one another whether we loved him or not has nothing to do with it when it comes to violence love is no longer a part of the equation So, this is an article, once again, by Io Tillett Wright, who was writing specifically about um, this, well, let's just say it was indirect, but 
Um, but we know, but everybody knows who it was about based on who was involved. No names were specifically said here. Um, and the reason why, uh, names are rarely used is specifically because of legal, uh, legal issues. But despite the fact that there were no names used in this article, we, everyone knew who was being talked about. This is about Depp Heard. Yes. Raquel Pennington was from the previous incident. This is a separate incident. This is I.O. Tillett Wright. Okay? And this is talking about the, uh, one of the incidents. One of the alleged incidents. Okay? So here again. Here's the article for those who are wondering. It's called Why I Called 911. Okay? Now, <clears throat> later that summer, Johnny Depp and heard settled their divorce in court okay now this is where um this is where it's going to get really weird okay it gets even weirder okay so get this they settle out their divorce and they agree um amber heard is awarded seven million dollars which she states publicly she is going to donate to charity okay so let's see if i can pull this up real quick here here we go. They agreed to have a joint statement and also that all that the money involved in the trial would be going to uh, charity. Now, you might be wondering why is why is the money going to charity? If you're wondering why the money from a divorce proceeding would be going to charity, it's because from the very beginning, Johnny Depp has asserted that Amber Heard was uh, was attempting to fabricate a, a, a narrative of spousal abuse so that she could uh, have a favorable financial outcome in their divorce. So now we're kind of jumping across time here, but one of the things that kept coming up against Amber Heard was this idea that that was what was happening. Because Johnny Depp claimed that at the beginning, people who were in support of Johnny Depp repeated that. And so in order to, uh, I mean, presumably, in order to sort of ward off the accusation that this was being done for money, Amber Heard promised to donate all of the um, all of the, the $7 million award from the trial to charity. So you understand why that is. Johnny Depp accuses Amber Heard of um, uh, of 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 uh, of wanting money out of it. Amber Heard says, "I don't want money out of it. I want this to be over. I'm going to donate all the money to charity." So let's take a look at this, and I'll show you exactly what happened. Um, in December of 2018, at the height of the Me Too movement, Amber Heard published an op-ed in the Washington Post calling out societal norms that prop up domestic abusers and knock down their victims. We are going to be reading this article in just a minute, okay? And if we scroll through here, um, this case is now set to go to trial on April 11 in Firefax County, Virginia. Both sides have at least partially staked their careers and reputations on 12 jurors who will assess, assess their credibility in what is essentially a he said, she said case. In particular for Depp, this is his last chance in court to vindicate himself as he claims that he's being boycotted by Hollywood over what he has called a hoax orchestrated by his ex-wife. And I believe, yes, here we go, right here. Heard proceeded to walk back her accusations during divorce proceedings in which she got a $7 million settlement. The pair said in a joint statement at the time, neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. There was never any intent of physical or emotional harm. But the dispute and animosity is far from over. Shortly after The Sun ran a piece calling Depp a wife beater, Heard published her Washington Post op-ed titled, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change. Hmm. A UK court found in Depp's defamation, defamation lawsuit against The Sun that the newspaper had prov proved that its claims that Depp beat Heard were mostly true. It sided with the publication that 12 of the 14 alleged incidents or assaults were proven. However, in March 2019, Depp sued Heard for defamation in Virginia State Court. He claimed her column, de her column depended on the false premise that he did ab indeed abuse her, claiming further that he was actually the victim. Now, 
two important things, two very important things have, um, have unfolded here. First off, we have in this article, we have a citation of Amber Heard promising to give the $7 million to charity. And we also have the beginnings of Johnny Depp's defamation lawsuits. Now, the lawsuit we are dealing with right now, the one that we're sort of winding up to talk about right now is a defamation lawsuit against Amber Heard. So starting in 2019, Johnny Depp basically went on, let's say he, he turned the tables a little bit. So instead of him being sued for divorce, instead of him being sued for uh, domestic abuse, he was putting together a case and suing the people for defamation, um, attempting to prove that he was actually not the one who did the, the abuse, but rather that he was the victim of abuse. Now, Amber Heard claimed that she would be donating all of these to charity, partially because there were a lot of accusations around at the time that um, that she was going to be, uh, that she was doing this for money, yeah? Now, unfortunately, as of the 10th of April, 2022, there has only been, now, this is really, really weird, okay? But according to her lawyers, they claim that she's donated less than $1 million to the ACLU and less than $1 million to the CHLA. She originally claimed that she would be doing an even split to charity between the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, the CHLA, and the ACLU, which is the American Civil, Civil Liberties Union. And now, um, I'm not sure, actually, because this happened recently. Let me just real quick double check and see if this was verified. I assume that if the lawyers verified it, and then that probably means that they're not lying about that part. But even still, less than a million, just less than a million, nine, $950,000 to the ACLU and $850,000 to the CHLA through anonymous donations. Uh-oh. Hmm. Now... Now, that's a little bit weird. That's very weird. And it's weird for a number of reasons. Because, first of all, if you are making a, a, a motion of good faith in donating the proceedings of your celebrity, of your, like, famous celebrity divorce that has a lot of public scrutiny, you would assume that you wouldn't want to do that anonymously that an anonymous donation would sort of do the opposite of what you were claiming to do. And it is very, very weird that the lawyers are willing to make this claim, but they can't prove it technically because it's through anonymous donors. Yeah, as a lot of people in chat are claiming right now, um, you know, anybody can claim to have donated whatever. Now, I'm sure that as time goes on, because this is a court trial, the truth of this will be revealed, right? Like, eventually, uh, somebody's going to be able to come forward. Somebody from the ACLU or somebody from the CHLA, and they should be able to pin down whether or not those donations actually happen. But I'm sure you can imagine, I'm sure you can understand why this is considered very, very sus. And unfortunately, it's going to get even weirder, okay? I've donated my time, Demon Mama. Where are all my fucking royalties? Not happy. It's going to get even sussier. Susser. Sussy. Yeah, it's going to get really sussy. And that's because um, we are going to get a... We are going to get a piece of audio that really changed everything. Now, some of you will recall this, that at the beginning of 2020, right in the middle 
of the uh, right in the middle of the uh, of the pan the beginning of the pandemic. We're still in the middle of the pandemic, as it turns out. But even uh, at the very at the sort of dead the dead start the de the dead center of the start of the pandemic. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're, we're still working on that one, everybody. Um, a very, very, very strange piece of audio came out. Okay, we're gonna read a little bit of a a little bit of a messy article about this. I can't promise I won't get physical again. I get so mad I lose it. Listen as Amber Heard admits to hitting ex-husband Johnny Depp and pelting him with pots, pans, and vases. An explosive audio confession. So I believe we have this uh, audio available in addition to a number of pictures, okay? So these are, oh yeah, look at this. This has got all of the photos and everything. Let's, let's listen to the audio if we've got it here. I believe this is the one right here. Yes, here we go. You called me a liar and yet you, yet. I watched you lie. You called me a liar. I watched you lie. I You're heard it. There's no what you still haven't told me what lie it is. We'll talk but yet to every single we'll time, talk you know to you Chavis. do this every single we'll talk time. To I'm not talking to nobody. No, that no. you go, go. I don't care. I really could care less. It's you every single time you latch onto some sort of thing. When I already told you, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't even know what you're talking about. You still haven't even told me what it is. But run with it. You I have told you what it is. No, you haven't. I said to Travis. I said Good. no. I said to you, hey. Tell Travis what just happened. You oh, you careless. told me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, t tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in the you thing and you in the out. face. And you said, no, no, I didn't. What the are you talking about? And I, I watched punch you lie. You. And then I, I didn't punch you, and by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, hit you me. across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you've been a lot of fights. It's been around a long time. I know. Yeah, no, I when you have a closed fist. You get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this. But I did not punch you. I did not deck you. I was hitting you. you can't I don't know what me. the motion of my actual hand was. But you're... Fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are your toes? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? How are your I, toes? I'm not sitting here about it, am I? You are. are That's you, the difference you between me toes. and you. You're a baby. Because you start you physical are fights? You such a baby! Because you, the because you start physical fights? I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. Every single time. What, what, what's your excuse? When there's not a physical fight, then what's the excuse there? You're still being admirable, right? Just by running away? And you can sit here and, and call me names, but you get called a name, and what do you do? That's the last insult. You're a baby. You're a hypocrite. You don't do anything that you actually do. You expect from people what you can't give them. If they do something, a taste of it to you, Lose it, but yet you dish it out. I left last night, Oz. Honestly, I swear to you, because I just couldn't take the idea of more physicality, more physical abuse on each other. <coughs> because had we continued, it it would have gotten know. bad. And baby, I told you this once. I'm scared to death of it. We are a crime scene waiting no. to happen if we don't get our together. And that, by getting our together, that might mean hey, we do this and we make it. That might mean, you know. See you later. Say, Sorry. I've tried. I know it's intense. To Lou. But we, we've got to get our together as individuals and as a couple so that was the audio that dropped at the beginning of 2020 now keep in mind that this audio was from 2015 uh-oh 
Uh oh. So that audio was from the very beginning of their conflicts, from just just shortly after the initial incident. Okay? So that was from 2015. That was right after they they got married. They got married in early um they got this this uh they got this oh i can't do i can't control the beeps i'm really sorry about that um this was before they got divorced this was just after they this would have been according to this this uh let me find if i can get the exact date of this recording nope this was there's no exact date this was from 2015 so it would have been sometime after they got married shortly after they got married within a couple of months now you can understand why actually we're going to get into this we're going to get into this real quick but first i want to read something else so keep this in mind put this on the back burner for now that this tape dropped in 2020 and we were going to go and we're going to go read amber heard's article talking about this and we're going to compare the article that she wrote talking about this experience and we're going to compare it to this recording from 2015. Okay? Merrick DeVille says, This sounds like the shit my ex would jokingly say to me when we first started dating before he got really abusive. Yeah, it's very, very messed up. The um, the, the recording is, is, is very upsetting. Because what you hear in the recording is a woman ad openly admitting to physically striking her husband and then belittling him for saying that he's not okay with that. And saying that he's like a pussy and a baby for not being willing to just sit there and take hits. It's, it's, that is, it is open gaslighting. It is open emotional abuse and it's caught on a recording. And it also comes with an admission of physical abuse on Amber's part. And it is a candid recording in which Johnny Depp is very careful to be like, I don't want to hit. I don't want to physically fight. I left so that we wouldn't physically fight. That's real gaslighting, by the way. Yes, exactly. As Nut says, this is what real gaslighting is, not what the internet turned the word into. Yes, this is gaslighting. It's saying, oh, 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 you're crazy. You're crazy for being mad when I hit you. I didn't, I didn't punch you. I, 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 I tapped you. I tapped you. It didn't hurt you. It didn't fucking hurt you. It's literally somebody undermining the sanity of their, of their poor, of their partner. Now, we listened to this audio because this was what reignited the conversation. Keep in mind that up until this point, um, there was a lot of, hmm, let's just say a lot of people had come to the conclusion that this was another example of, of a sort of hashtag me too incident, that this was a, a incident of a powerful male celebrity abusing a female celebrity and getting away with it more or less. Johnny Depp was removed from Pirates of the Caribbean, allegedly. He was, um, he voluntarily stepped down from the, uh, Harry Potter Fantastic Beasts, um, series. He's, he's been, uh, he's claimed that he's had a very hard time getting leading roles because of this, which I think all checks, right? If you have a high profile case in which you're being alleged of abusing your wife, it makes sense that lots of people would not want to have you in their projects. However, that all of that being fair is contingent on whether the story is true or not. Up to this point, people had sort of more or less sided with Amber because Amber had two friends who were um, speaking out on her side of things and none of this audio had been released yet. So when the audio came out, this was a shocking uh, change in pace. And for a lot of people who had been defending Johnny Depp, this came as a form of vindication. Hey, look, we were right. Johnny wasn't doing anything wrong in the first place. But of course, it's never quite so simple. We're going to jump in and we are going to read a uh, an article 
that was uh, put out by Amber Heard. Oh shit! I just closed my chat by accident. I apologize, everybody. So sorry, everybody. I just delete. I just I just closed my chat by accident. Aw, oh, it makes me so sad. One second. There we go. All right, chat's back. Sorry about that. My apologies, everybody. Um, small. Yeah, I, I goofed up. We're gonna read this article real quick. Uh, um. Let's see. Let me just grab the the link here. Here we go. This was published in the Washington Post in 2018. So this was two years before that audio that we just listened to released. Amber Heard, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's rash wrath. That has to change. Amber Heard is an actress and ambassador on women's rights at the American Civil Liberties Union. I was exposed to abuse at a very young age. I knew certain things early on without ever having to be told. Now remember, before we read any further, just a quick reminder, this is written by Amber Heard before the audio we just listened to released. I knew that men have the power, physically, socially, and financially, and that a lot of institutions support that arrangement. I knew this long before I had the words to articulate it, and I bet you learned it young, too. Like many women, I had been harassed and sexually assaulted by the time I was of college age, but I kept quiet. I did not expect filing complaints to bring justice, and I didn't see myself as a victim. Then, two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. Friends and advisors told me I would never again work as an actress, that I would be blacklisted. A movie I was attached to recast my role. I had just shot a two-year campaign as the face of a global fashion brand, and the company dropped me. Questions arose as to whether I would be able to keep my role of Mara in the movies Justice League and Aquaman. She did. I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Imagine a man, a powerful man as a ship, like the Titanic. That ship is a huge enterprise. When it strikes an iceberg, there are a lot of people on board desperate to patch up holes, not because they believe in it or even care about the ship, but because their own fates depend on the enterprise. In recent years, the Me Too movement has taught us all about how power like this works, not just in Hollywood, but in all kinds of institutions, workplaces, places of worship, or simply in particular communities. In every walk of life, women are confronting these men who are buoyed up by social, economic, and cultural power, and these institutions are beginning to change. We are in a transformative political moment. The president of our country has been accused by more than a dozen women of sexual misconduct, including assault and harassment. Outrage over his statements and behavior has energized a female-led opposition. Me Too started a conversation about just how profoundly, sexual, uh, how profoundly sexual violence affects women in every area of our lives. And last month, more women were elected to Congress than ever in our history, with a mandate to take women's issues seriously. Women's rage and determination to end sexual violence are turning into a political force. We have an opening now to bolster and build institutions protective of women. For starters, Congress can reauthorize and strengthen the Violence Against Women Act. First passed in 1994, the act is one of the most effective pieces of legislation enacted to fight domestic violence and sexual assault. It creates a support system for people who report abuse and provides funding for rape crisis centers legal assistance programs, and other critical services. It improves responses by law enforcement, and it prohibits discrimination against LGBTQ survivors. Funding for the act expired in September and has only been temporarily expended. extended. We should continue to fight sexual assault on college campuses while simultaneously insisting on fair processes for adjudicating complaints. Adjudicating complaints. Last month, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos proposed changes to Title IX rules governing the treatment of sexual harassment and assault in schools. While some changes would make the process for handling complaints more fair, others would weaken the protections for sexual assault survivors. For example, the new rules would require schools to investigate only the most extreme complaints, and then only when they're made to designated officials. Women on campuses already have trouble coming forward. Why would we allow them to scale back? Why would we allow institutions to scale back support? 
I write this as a woman who had to change my phone number weekly because I was getting death threats. For months, I rarely left my apartment, and when I did, I was pursued by camera drones and photographers on foot, motorcycles, and in cars. Tabloid outlets that posted pictures of me spun them in a negative light. I felt as though I was on trial for the in the court of public opinion, and my life and livelihood depended on myriad judgments far beyond my control. I want to ensure that women who come forward to talk about violence receive more support. We are electing representatives who know how deeply we care about these issues. We can work together to demand changes to laws and rules and social, social norms and to right the imbalances that have shaped our lives. So, this is an interesting article, is it not? Because this article was seen as a sort of a major... Uh, a, a major uh, vocal support of the Me Too movement. It was seen as a sort of rallying cry politically, and it touched on a bunch of genuinely important issues. So you can imagine how bad it was when this audio came out that more or less proved that Amber herself was an abuser, that Amber herself may have indeed been the abuser in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard marriage. You can imagine how much outrage, legitimate outrage this caused. Think of it for a couple of different ways, right? Um first of all, you have a somebody who is invoking me too. You have somebody invoking the uh violent the uh, violence what's it called the violence against women violence against women act you have people invoking specific political struggles that people are desperately desperately trying to win on and keep in mind that some of the claims that amber heard made are still true even if amber herself is a hypocrite so think about it like this it is true that in our society, women are taught that men are the ones who hold power. It is true that in our society, by and large, financial and political power is held and wielded by men. It is true that most women and uh, and femme presenting people will experience some form of sexual assault by the time they reach adulthood, which is incredibly fucked up. All of these things are true. And there's a bunch of people who are in denial of that. And this is where it starts to get even messier. And this is where we're going to, in just a couple of minutes, talk about the political implications of all of this. You hear, every time I hear Violence Against Women Act, I hear it in Bernie's voice. The Violence Against Women Act. Vermin Hand says, she's not wrong about her points, but she's evil for using it when she herself was an abuser. Not only would I say that it's like personally, um, like personally offensive, um, but also I think that it's damaging, right? Because keep in mind, and we're going to talk about this to a full extent as we get into the discussion segment of this whole thing. Um, but just think of how many people do who do not who already are in who like already downplay or do apologia for sexual assault think of how much this can empower their position they go yeah remember that time remember the me too movement remember when p probably one of the one of the biggest uh, outside of the original uh claims against um against harvey weinstein like probably one of the biggest me too related cases is 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 undermined can you imagine what those people are like? Look at that. It was all fake to begin with. Look, Amber Heard was bullshit. This Me Too shit has gone too far. They just want you to believe anything. You see what I mean? That's a that's a really big issue to deal with. How do you content? Like, that makes it really hard for Me Too. That makes it hard for the ACLU. Keep in mind, remember, that at the time of this article, Amber Heard was an ambassador for women's rights at the American Civil Liberties Union. Think of how bad it is if the American Civil Liberties Union not only um not only like had someone working on their on their staff who was an abuser making laws about abuse victims but also was appointed to a, pos a honorable position of ambassador. Yikes. That is really really bad. That is that is a bad. Let's we call that an optical whoopsie. You know, that's bad optics. That's what we like to call bad optics, okay? But we're going to get there, and we're going to talk about all of that, okay? So that was 
one of the, uh, that was one of the most sort of uh, uh, extreme uh, things. But we're going to go here and we're going to talk about a whole bunch more, okay? Because there's a lot in this article and we got to go through some of it. Let's go down here, okay? So we watch this right here. Oh, hey, we got another recording. Here's another recording. We didn't even listen to this one. Let's listen to this recording. You. And I do not want to leave you. I do not want a divorce. I do not want you out of my life. I just want peace. If things get physical, we have to separate. We have to be apart from one another, whether it's for an hour or 10 hours or a day we must there can be no physical violence i towards agree each other. about the physical violence but separating for a day or I'm, night I'm, and taking a night off from our marriage no 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 that? all i'm saying is we need to take whatever time we need you need or i need to kind of let things settle for a minute so that we don't kill each other or worse, you know, like really kill each other or, or break up or whatever. If the fight escalates to the point of where it's just insulting for both of us, uh, or if it gets to that physical f the violence, that's when we just say, look, let's go to our corners, man. You, you, you hang wherever you want, baby. I'm going in the office, and I'm just going to sit there and try and de-jellify my f brain. I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I f Wow. Sometimes I get so mad, I lose it. I can promise you I'm going to do everything to change. I promise you, I'm not going to throw around divorce. I will not say divorce unless I really mean it. I love you. I want you to be my wife. And I want to be your husband. I want to be a good husband. And if I haven't been... You know, I'll do everything... I can to find out how. So in this video, we hear we hear Amber Heard say, I can't promise I won't get physical again. Now, these audio, these these are two short audio recordings, but it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to not walk away from both of these audio recordings with the conclusion that maybe Johnny Depp was telling the truth. In both of these recordings, Johnny Depp is clearly de-escalating. Johnny Depp is clearly uh, trying to set boundaries, and Amber is repeatedly um, crossing those lines and, and refusing to make basic promises like, I won't hit you. It's really hard to misinterpret these types of messages. Now, it is true that we don't know what other conversations were like. Maybe this was a conversation in which Johnny Depp was very calm and Amber Heard was very angry. We don't know for sure. But it is extremely hard to ignore the fact that these recordings from 2015 line up with the storyline that Johnny Depp was putting forward, not the story that Amber Heard was putting forward. Yet, she admits to starting the fights in both of these cases. Now, it is possible that Johnny Depp specifically picked um, recordings in which Amber looked bad. But at the same time, this is also two on-tape admissions of guilt. And Johnny, Johnny Depp has denied all of the uh, wrongdoing from the very beginning. He has denied all of it. And the evidence of his abuse is mostly in the form of photographs. But if you notice, there are also lots of photographs of Johnny Depp having been hit or injured. Here's one of a, of a very bad cut 
in his finger. Depp claims he severed his finger because Heard was enraged. She was asking to sign a postnuptial agreement, and she threw bottles at him. He claimed one of the bottles hit a marble countertop and exploded, ripping off the tip of his finger. This is wild. And there's all kinds of photos in here. It's understood there are several more tapes out there, each promising further bombshells as the former lovers trade blood-curdling alle allegations of domestic violence. I left last night. Honestly, I swear to you because I just couldn't take the idea of more physicality, more physical abuse on each other, an exasperated Depp pleads in the recording. Because once we had continued it, I would have got it would have gotten fucking bad. And baby, I told you this once. I'm scared to death. We're a fucking crime scene right now. That's from the recording we listened to before. Heard, who filed for divorce in 2016, accusing Depp of beating her uh, during her t toxic 18-month marriage wards. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I fucking get so mad I lose it. Depp filed his 50 million defamation suit after Heard penned an op-ed for the Washington Post. That's the one that we read. So when that post was was published in the wa in the Washington Post, that's when Johnny Depp decided he was going to sue Amber Heard for de defamation. Now, just so you know, winning a defamation case is not super easy in America. In fact, winning a def defamation case in America requires you being able to prove some things pretty definitively false. And that doesn't mean that the case is legit, but with these videos, with these videos and the fact that Johnny Depp was willing to per pursue a $50 million defamation lawsuit, it's beginning at this point in time, which was early 2020, it was beginning to seem like maybe Amber hadn't been telling all of the truth. Or perhaps maybe was even lying altogether. Did I say defamation? I'm very sorry. I'm sorry if I stumbled up. Defamation. Yeah, I, I struggle with the F sometimes because of my tongue. Now, keep in mind, this is where it gets very specific. Depp claimed it impl implicated him as an abuser, damaging his reputation and causing him to lose his prized role of Captain Jack Sparrow. His suit says that he's the victim of an elaborate hoax instigated by Heard to generate positive pu publicity and advance her career. Miss Heard is not a victim of, of domestic abuse. She is a perpetrator. So Johnny Depp is denying all guilt of domestic abuse. She hit, punched, and kicked me. She also repeatedly and frequently threw objects into my body and head, including heavy bottles, soda cans, burning candles, television remote controls, and paint thinner cans, which severely injured me. Heard responded with a lurid 300-page filing of her own, cataloging the horrific abuse she claims to have suffered at Depp's hands, describing him as the monster, and recalling many of the allegations she made during their divorce. These, these filings included photos of of injuries uh, hair being pulled out all kinds of things it looks like there's a lot of photos here now heard claimed police had evidence of the may 27 2016 attack but two lapd officers later said in a deposition they found nothing to suggest a crime took place so it's starting to get very very weird because the LAPD who showed up on the scene didn't find on the ground what the other people claimed. So Amber Heard and Amber Heard's witnesses who weren't technically witnesses, they only came after the alleged crime occurred, conflict with the story that the LAPD found. Now listen, cops are fucking liars, okay? But in this particular case, we don't really have any reason to believe that the cops are on anybody's side here. We know cops are fucking bastards. We know cops lie all the time, but they usually lie when it, in, when it comes between siding with, you know, a corporation that they're arresting a shoplifter, between the cops and violence. You know, they lie about the violence they do all the time. 
we have no reason to assume that in this particular case, the LAPD wouldn't document the evidence. But both of the officers who showed up said they did not see what the witnesses claimed to have seen. Which is very weird. And also, yes, as Windleby points out, cops treat celebrities differently anyway. One of the cops was wearing a body cam and no damage was seen on the footage. We're going to get there. Don't you worry. We're going to get there. Um, Pansabi asks, what did the witnesses claim to see? Well, we listened to the tale of two of the different uh, witnesses. We listened to Io. Um, sorry, let me just get the names here. I want to make sure we got the names right. Okay. We got the um, Io Tillett Wright wrote the piece I call why I called 911. They alleged to have seen um a a bunch of damage in the house. They alleged to have seen a pillow covered in blood. They um they alleged to have seen clumps of hair on the floor. And then also Pennington um uh uh Raquel Pennington claimed to have come over to the house toward the end of the of the uh 2016 incident after Johnny Depp's mother died and uh Raquel Pennington claims to have seen him swinging a bottle around but again that's not what was reported by the police the police did not seem to see the damage that lined up with um that lined up with what both of these people were claiming does that understand the, the cops say they didn't see these signs. Now, we're going to get into that fully if I can find the uh, the full statement. But we'll get there. We have to get there first. This is a long story, I know. Here we go. Depp complains he's forced to leave when she becomes manic and angry, telling Heard, I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation with you. You fucking hit me last night. He goes on to add, I'm not the one who throws pots and whatever the fuck else at me. Heard responds, that's different. That's different. One does not negate the other. That's irrelevant. That's a complete non sequitur. Just because I've thrown pots and pans does not mean you can come and knock on my door. Uh-oh. When Depp comes... Cuts in to suggest he's also had vases hurled at him. She replies, just because there are vases does not mean that you come and knock on the door. So really, I should just let you throw them? Depp replies, the only time I ever threw anything at you, at you was when you fucking threw the cans at me in Australia. Heard, at, uh, he admits. So, so Johnny Depp in this recording says that the only time he's ever thrown anything back was when, um, was when he was had something thrown at him first. Heard asks, why are you trying to justify who throws things based on whether or not you come knocking on the door? I don't get why one informs the other. Depp says, because that's a fucking irrational and violent fucking maneuver. So a man would want to get out of that area so he doesn't get so fucking angry that he actually does pop, the, pop his wife. The exchange doesn't specifically point to an event, but is a possible reference to the contentious and bloody incident in which Depp suffered a severed finger one month into their marriage in Australia wild he claimed that his then wife went berserk when he asked her to sign a prenup and hurled a bod vodka bottle at him which shattered on a countertop ripping off the tip of his finger we've seen photos of that that seems to be true heard maintained that depp cut the finger off himself during an argument while he was drunk and high on ecstasy do you are you starting to see the pattern here are you starting to see the pattern here Oh, no, 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 you didn't, I didn't throw anything at you that cut your finger. You cut it off yourself. You were high. That's gaslighting. That's gaslighting. Just blatant textbook gaslighting. I am going to insist that your telling of reality is insane and false. And not only that, but I'm going to say it's so insane and false that actually you did it yourself. You cut your own finger, finger off. He says he texted his building manager, Travis, to come to their home because he was afraid the fight would escalate. I said to you, hey, tell Travis what just happened. And that you and, and then you said you punched me in the face. And, and you said, no, I fucking didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I watched you lie. 
notice this. She admits in the video, not only in the video that we, or sorry, not in the video, in the audio recording that we just listened to, not only does she admit to abusing Johnny Depp, but she also admits to lying to someone in front of his face. So she admits to uh to explicitly lying about what happened in front of other people and not only that but lying in such a way that i would categorize it at, categorize it as gaslighting yeah i think after everything gaslighting is the thing that messed me up that's why i hate so much what happened yeah it's very stressful it's stressful to see these recordings of somebody being lied to directly to their face, being called a pussy because they said that it hurt when they were hit. Guys, if you hit somebody and they say it hurts, that's their right to say that. They're not being like, that is abuse. It is, it is explicitly abusive to follow up with that. Nah, nah, you're just a, you're just a, a pussy because I hit you. And then, um, <laughs> And then we're going to get into some more things, okay? So, here we go. Here we go. Dad of two Depp lists at least three physical fights that they have had in the previous month and a half to two months. If things get physical, we have to separate. We have to be apart from one another. Whether or not it's, a, for, it's for an hour or 10 hours or a full day, we must. There can be no physical violence towards each other. All I'm saying is we need to take whatever time we need, you need, I need, to kind of let things settle so they won't fucking kill each other or worse. You know, really fucking kill each other or fucking break up. Both Heard and Depp concede that their wild marriage fails to offer security or a safe environment for either of them. Using language similar to her later submissions, Heard also questions whether the monster with Depp is gone. What are we going to do different in this moment when you're mad and you go fuck it and you decide all bets are off, she asked Depp. He replies, look at what I did in Australia. Look at what I accomplished. I put the fucker away. I told myself every fucking day, no, he's gone. No, he's fucking. Put him away. There's the scar right there. There's the scar on his finger. You can see it right there. The tape eventually leads to a moment of reconciliation with Depp urging Heard, let's do our best to fix what's broken within the machine, the machine that is us. I love you and I want to be my wife, etc., etc. And then she filed for a divorce shortly afterwards. Now, this is where things are going to get a little bit weirder. Um, there, The allegations back and forth are off the rails. You see, there's like, I mean, God, there's so much of this. Go, go ahead. We're going to watch some stuff now, okay? And you're going to understand now um, where we're at. So we have basically gone through the bulk of the history here, okay? So, oh, actually, sorry. We have one more thing to look at before we jump into the stuff that's currently under, under like, under, uh, uh, currently unfolding, okay? So first things first, this, all right? Before the current trial, which began just a couple of days ago, before the current trial began, um, Amber Heard posted a public statement. Um, and it's a little bit odd, okay? We're gonna read we're gonna read it and we're gonna talk about it. And it's going to explain what a little bit about the current ongoing court trial. And then we're gonna go watch some of the clips from the court trial and talk about um all of the various angles to be talked about on this. But of course, as with all drama mamas, it's important to understand what we're talking about and why. So let's read this first. This was published on April 9th. So just, just, just a bit earlier this month. I'm going to go offline. This is by Amber Heard. So you can see the official Amber Heard account right here on April 9th. I'm going to go offline for the next several weeks. As you may know, I'll be in Virginia where I face my ex-husband Johnny Depp in court. Johnny is suing me for an op-ed I wrote in the Washington Post, in which I recounted my experience of violence and domestic abuse. I never named him. Rather, I wrote about the price women pay for speaking out against men in power. I continue to pay that price. But hopefully, when this case concludes, I can move on and so can Johnny. I have always maintained a love for Johnny, and it brings me great pain to have to live out the details of our past life together in front of the world. At this time, I recognize the ongoing support I've been fortunate to receive through these years, and in the coming weeks, I will be leaning on it more than ever. With love, always, A. 
Amber Heard. Isn't it extremely weird to release a public statement before a defamation case? Yes, it is. It's actually very... Okay, it's not very weird, but it is weird. It is weird to make a big open statement which further adds more to get litigated in the trial. It doesn't really make a whole lot of logical sense to add more onto the pile of things that are already going to be litigated by releasing a public statement of this type. Um, it is just, it is weird. It's not the weirdest thing ever, but it is kind of weird because, especially because, um, like saying things like this, this is the part that was weird for me. I never named him. Rather, I wrote about the price women pay for speaking out against men in power. I continue to pay that price, but hopefully when this case ends, I can move on and so can Johnny. This right here is very odd. I think it's weird to say that you never named him. Am Amber Heard is Amber Heard ha was involved in one extremely famous calling of a man, calling out of a man in power. One, it's very very obvious that she was talking about Johnny Depp in that article. I do not know why she would say claim make a statement that says, "Oh, I never named him." Well, it's very clear unless Unless the key to her argument is going to be that that article wasn't really about Johnny Depp and therefore none of the things in that article can be attributed to Johnny Depp. Now, I don't know if that's going to work. I don't think that's going to work. I'm just saying, if you are, if, if it's pretty obvious what was being talked about, now it may you know, cross the line for defamation and she may be able to get away with that. But isn't that a little bit telling in the first place? Isn't it a bit telling if you're getting sued for defamation and your out is, well, technically the article that I obviously wrote about you, I didn't actually say your name in it. So it's not technically about you, even though everyone who read that article for the last two years for the last four years, sorry. Everyone who read that article for the last four years knew it was about Johnny Depp and knew that I was making huge accusations about Johnny Depp's behavior and also tying Johnny Depp directly in to Harvey Weinstein, a serial rapist who was the, the main cause of the Me Too movement. very very weird okay that's the part that's the that's the part that comes off as extremely weird um and uh and also um uh, and also uh, is it telling? Yes. Is it incriminating? We don't know. We'll find out if it's incriminating. She definitely damaged my opinion of Johnny Depp for a while. Well, she damaged a lot of people's opinions for Johnny Depp. See, this is the thing. This is the weird thing about this whole trial. This trial has been really polarizing because at first it seemed pretty clear cut that Johnny Depp was abusive in the situation there were two friends who came forward with amber amber had a lot of things to claim and she was she was using the me too hashtag so a lot of people were willing to jump to amber's defense and it makes sense why people were willing to to hear her side of the story however as always assumptions make an ass out of you and me uh, just to just to, to send that home, let's watch some of the current stuff because I don't know if you guys know this, but there's the the reason why we're talking about this is because it's all in the news again, and it's all in the news again because of this defamation trial, this defamation trial which could go extremely badly for Amber Heard, and let's be honest, a lot of very 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 weird things have um have sort of unfolded here um have unfolded here in this trial let's talk about one of them we're gonna watch this little bit right here okay um let's just watch this here i'm sure of course you felt something but it felt okay wait wait first we have to get it out of our system okay everybody get it out of your system 
All right, everybody. This is the part where they talk about the poo. Yeah, that's right. I bet you didn't think it was going to go here. Get it out of your system. Amber turd. Ha ha ha. Amber turd. Okay, everybody. Um, now that you've gotten it out of your system, okay? Uh, unfortunately, it appears that the abuse between these two may have gotten poopy as well. That's right. Um, the echo fart was literal foreshadowing? Yes, it was. That's right. Uh, according to Johnny Depp, Amber literally threw poop at him and poop and put poop in his bed. Like, like that's an actual allegation. And there are, there are literal images of shit that are, that have been submitted to the court at this point. And let me just tell you, if this turns out that Johnny Depp wasn't lying, not only is Amber Heard's career completely destroyed, but we will also now be able to say that in the court of law, the episode Who Pooped the Bed from Always Sunny in Philadelphia has come true in real life. In the court of law, under oath. Okay? Yeah, I was thinking about who shit the bed. Yeah, exactly. Um... But this is it. We get to see it now in real life, okay? So, but we got to listen to this. So we're going to listen to this, uh, albeit slightly long uh, 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 court thing. We're going to speed it up a little bit. We're going to put it up to uh, a, two, a 2x speed or 1.75 speed because, um, you know, listening to court proceedings is boring if you don't, uh, if you don't like speed it up a little bit. But I want us to listen in and, and hear some of the actual like court recordings itself. So let's look into this right now. Okay, this is the poop. Johnny Depp talking about finding fecal matter on his bed. Unfair. It felt small comparatively if your loved one or your husband uh, uh, has had some very serious issues brought before him. Um, so uh, when she engaged in her normal kind of banter of uh, trying to poke at me and get me to react, I literally just got into, I got into bed. Um, I remember the television was on and I, and I was reading. And I suppose Mr. Ed was down in her area taking off her makeup and changing into sleep clothes, whatever. And uh, she entered the bedroom <clears throat> while I was laying on my side of the bed reading. And she was still rattling off all the wrongs I'd uh, done to her in that particular day and, and how unreliable I am and uh, what, a, you know, what a horrible person I was. Um, and I, and I, didn't not, I did not engage verbally nothing i sat there or laid there reading my book and when that when she didn't get a jump out of me or a jolt out of me she got out of bed she walked around the bed she came to my side and uh, again you know you, you've got to, you've got a person who is uh throwing multiple shots at your at your face at your head at your neck at your at anything she could hit so i i got up out of bed and i grabbed her by the shoulders and I sat her down on the bed, <clears throat> and I said, I'm leaving. Please don't get off the bed. Please don't follow me. Please don't try and stop me. I'm leaving. And she got up off the bed, and she squared off at me in the doorway of our bedroom. And I said, what do you, what do you want to do, hit me again? Would you like to hit me again? And I said, go ahead, hit me. Bam. And then I just said, did that, is that what you wanted? Would you like another? Bam. There's the second one. And I said, good, now you're done. Grabbed her by the shoulders, walked her to the bed, sat her down and said, don't follow me, leave me alone. I'm out, I'm gone. I went, I grabbed a few things and I got out immediately and I went to um, my other house you know, on Sweetser. As Ms. Heard was, she was leaving the following day for uh, Coachella, which is a, a, it's a Coachella is like a, it's a big event, a concert, you know, many, many bands, and um, yeah, on the desert, she, she, she and her friends were going to Coachella for the weekend, and um, that was it, that was, that was it. Mr. Depp, after April 21st, 2016, when was the next time that you actually saw Miss Heard in person? I left Miss Heard, well, I left Penthouse 3, I left at 4.30 in the morning, uh, on, it was actually April, it was actually her birthday, it was 4.30 4 in the morning, April 22nd, and that's when I left. And from that moment on, thank I you, Janae Rose. Appreciate that. Miss Heard until 
May 21st. And why was that? Um, I had received some news that was as absurd and grotesque and cruel. Um, and then I was shown a picture of what the problem was. I had gone to Mr. Bett and said, uh, she's, in Coachella. she's at Coachella. I think it's a good time to go downtown so that I can get some of my things, you know, and uh, get them out of there, especially the things that were uh, uh, precious to me, you know, children things, things from friends, Brando, Hunter, Thompson, whatever, things that were important to me. And he said, I don't think now's a good time to go. And I thought, it's the perfect time. She's not going to be home for two days. And then he showed me a photograph on his telephone of a... Uh, Objection, Your Honor. I'll it, it's a photograph, Your Honor. As being relayed to him by Mr. Beck. He, he says he looked at it on his, on his phone. I'll rule the objection as a photograph. What was the photograph of Mr. Depp? It was a, it was a, it was a photograph of the bed, our bed, um, and on my side of the bed um, was human fecal matter. Um, so I understood why it wasn't a good time to go down there. Um, my initial response to that was, I mean, I laughed. It was so outside, it was so bizarre, and so grotesque that I could only laugh. Um, and um, so I did not go down there that day. Mr. Depp, how was your mother's health during this time? Um, not good, not good at all. My mom, my mom was in the Cedar Sinai. Let's go back. Yeah, let's and, hear uh, this again. We're gonna go back just a little bit to make sure that um, this is all. Because I know that some of this got interrupted. The bed. So here we go. Um, response to that was, I mean, I laughed. I, Sorry. It wasn't a good time to go down. The bed. It was a. It was a. Here we go. It was a. It was a. It was a photograph of the bed, our bed, um, and on my side of the bed. Um, was human fecal matter. Um, so I understood why it wasn't a good time to go down there. Um, so what Johnny Depp has just said is that he was going to go get some of his stuff from the house while uh, Amber was at Coachella. And when he went, when he was going to go back to the house, his friend who was at the house, her, his friend or property manager was at the house already and said, dude, you don't want to come down here. And he sent a picture. And the reason why his friend told him not to come down was because there was shit smeared all over his bed. Presumably by Amber. So she just shit on his bed, allegedly, and then ditched. My initial response to that was, I mean, I laughed. I, it was so outside. It was so bizarre and so grotesque that I could only laugh. Um, and um, so I did not go down there that day. Mr. Depp, how was your mother's health during this time? Not good, not good at all. My mom, my mom was in the Cedar Sinai Hospital, and uh, she was she was on her way out. She was dying. How she, often were you going to see her during this time? Excuse me. How often were you going to see her during this time? Um, uh, as much as I could under the circumstances. Um, but the, the, and uh, when I when I when I did go go and. Get to see my mom. Um, she was pretty much uh, incapable of. No, speech. I see what you're saying, Queen Medea. Actually, at that time, at that time she her, does kind of look like Hillary Clinton a little bit. She, she, she seemed to. She, her eyes were still open, and she was. She could, kind of react with her eyes, but she couldn't speak. And then, not long after that, um, once her eyes closed, she lay there for the duration of her, of her life, which ended on the 20th of May. Um, the, the, the night before I saw Miss Hurd for the last time, well, essentially. I'm so sorry, Mr. Depp, but how did your mother's death affect you? As would anyone, I suppose. 
But it was one thing that I couldn't fathom was, I, I mean, I, I brought my kids to see Betty Sue in the hospital, and uh, at that time she was not functioning, she was not responsive, she, she, was, she was alive still, she was fighting still inside, but she was, she was uh, lying in the bed, um, and what, excuse this analogy, but all I could think of was how, if, if she's conscious of, of, if she's conscious of everything that's going on around her, but has no ability to speak, has no ability to move, um, I, I knew that the one thing, as far as Betty Sue was concerned, the last thing that she would have wanted was to have ended up lying there on a, what, what it was like, there's my mom lying there on a deli platter, and it was a, it was a horrible image, but I brought my kids in to say goodbye, and we all spoke into her ear, and, uh, and then she passed away later. It's really tough to deal with. So it was, uh, it was painful, but there was some side of it too, at least to me, that in, in, in a way it was, uh, I was happy for her. Why because, was I, I can't, because I can't imagine Betty Sue or my mom, I can't imagine anyone lying there in quite probably, quite possibly was a, 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 a kind of a locked in syndrome. And if she's surrounded by 10 people looking at her lying there in that, on that deli platter, if you will, I was happy for her that she was out of pain, out of frustration, out of, I, I was happy that she moved, not happy, I was relieved that she was no longer in that situation. Though, when those you love leave, we're the ones stuck with the, uh, with the pain, with the grieving. Um, but, but I was glad that my kids got to see her and give her her, 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 her send off, I suppose. And, um, but it was, no, no, it, 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 it opened my eyes quite a lot to a number of things. And what were some of those things that your mother's death opened your eyes to? That life is a bird song. That that what feels like a hundred years is in fact a second, a millisecond. Nobody can count those things. So I had made peace with Betty Sue because I understood where she came from and I understood how difficult her childhood was. And I understood that she had, had not had the uh, proper training or proper teaching or the proper background to, to be anything other than what she had been when we were younger. I, I... So we're going to we're going to stop this part of the of the uh of the um trial at now that we've sort of gotten through the um the the sort of basic one of the main things here we're going to watch a couple other little bits of this but the reason why um some people in chat are asking why is why is talking about Johnny Depp's mother a part of the trial well the answer is because um the initial incidents that triggered this entire thing happened um the the night of and leading into the morning after the death of Johnny Depp's mom. Now, um, so the alleged incident supposedly happened the next day, like the the night of slash morning after, like 4 a.m. Um, of the day that Johnny, Johnny Depp's mother died. Um, and this has been a recurring thing, which is that Johnny Depp has been very open about his relationship with his parents um let me just read a quick um i'm just gonna read a little bit from his rolling stone profile so johnny depp in uh in 2018 a article was written about johnny depp where he opened up about a lot of his life so just a warning um just a warning real quick i'm just gonna read this real quick okay so uh, this is the way, uh, uh, this is the way that Johnny Depp talked about his mother in this article. Yeah, there were irrational beatings, said Depp. Maybe it's an ashtray coming your way. Maybe you're going to get clunked with a phone. Johnny Depp paused. It was a ghost house. No one talked. I don't think there was ever a way that I thought about people, especially women, other than I can fix them. Um, so... What he's talking about here is his experience growing up in a household of abused people and being one of the abused people in his household. Um, Johnny Depp um, is is someone who um, 
clearly has experienced some pretty severe abuse in his life and had a very complicated relationship to his mother. And of course, many people have weighed in on this abuse. So there's a couple of things that we're going to happen. We're going to sort of talk about, um, you know, in the sort of follow up to this conversation. But there's another thing I really, really want to talk about here, which is um another uh, another on another sort of oft ignored factor that's going on so what we've talked about so far is the history of the trial the history of their disagreements we've talked about some of the incidents that both of them have claimed and now we started to talk about some of the context that was in their lives that could have led to them being in in a powder keg situation and this is one that goes a little bit further, okay? So listen to this. So um so first of all, um in January uh, by January 2016, this is a citation from the Rolling Stone profile of Johnny Depp. Listen to this. By January of 2016, Joel Mandel, Depp's longtime business manager and co-leader co of the management group with his brother Robert Mandel, was informing Depp's, Johnny Depp's sister that uh, the only person besides Johnny Depp who could make, uh, uh, or, sorry, sorry, um, Depp's sister, who was the only other person um, that Johnny Depp allowed to make controls uh, control over his finances, that, they, that Johnny Depp only had 30 days of liquidity left. Um, Depp still professed that he trusted Joel Mandel, texting him in late February that he had great love for him. But shortly after, the communication suddenly ceased. D uh, Depp then uh, fired uh, Joel Mandel's firm 10 days later in March of 2016, and a legal war began. So um, what I want to talk about this... Um, Wait, did I get a disinterneted? Did I get a... I'm not seeing any breakdowns on my time. Sorry about that if there's another issue. I want you to listen to, to, to this going on, okay? So, in 2016, less than a year after Johnny Johnny Depp and Amber Heard got married, Johnny Depp gets the news um, that he has 30 days of liquidity left before he is literally out of cash, before he is broke, Okay? And as it turns out, Johnny Depp was essentially being taken advantage of um, by uh, by his financial manager, Joel Mandel and Robert Mandel. So this is all going on at the same time. At the same time as the uh, as the uh, allegations of abuse, at the same time as their early marriage, in which we know there were multiple incidents of Johnny Depp being physically hit. Um, yeah, Queen Mediva says it cost, this guy cost him like $600 million. We're talking, uh, we're talking, the guy was being, the guy was being swindled. He was being completely and utterly ripped off. So he trusted this guy. He said that he had great love for Joel. And that was before he found out that Joel Mandel was functionally, um, completely screwing him over. So let's talk about the reason why all of this is relevant is because I think it talks to the sort of fucked up situation that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard were in emotionally leading up to this. Their their marriage was already rough leading up to the divorce. Johnny Depp's mother dies. And just shortly before this all goes down, uh, Johnny Depp finds out that his, his financial manager has been screwing him over and he's completely out of money. Now, the restraining order went out on May 28th, and this news of, of Johnny Depp essentially being broke happened in January of 2016. So you can understand why this would also look a little bit suspicious as well. Um... Because, you know, rocky relationship, one in which we have admission 
by Amber Heard that she was physically abusive to Johnny Depp. Then they find out that um that he no longer has any money. And then she goes to divorce him, gets a restraining order, and sues him for $7 million, which she wins. A lot of people read that and are reading that now as her basically taking what she could and getting out. Things are very strange in this whole setup. Also, this is a weird one. This is a random note. Um, listen to this. This is a weird little tidbit, okay? A Business Insider story read, Here are the American executives who are working on behalf of Putin. Waldman was the first on the list which detailed his service for Oleg Der Deripaska, an aluminum magnate and Russian oligarch with strong ties to the Russian president. According to Business Insider, Waldman has been paid more than $2.3 million for his work on behalf, behalf of Deripaska. Meanwhile, Deripaska became a bit of a player in the Russian collusion scandal when it was reported by the Washington Post that then-Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort offered to give Deripaska private briefings on the campaign shortly before the GOP convention. Waldman has his own cameo in the punt in the tr in the uh, Putin Trump meshugas in February. None other than Trump would accuse him in a typically factually distorted tweet without naming him of trying to broker a meeting between Trump dossier writer Christopher Steele and Democratic Senator um, Democratic Senator uh, Mark Warner. Now, that's Johnny Depp's lawyer. Johnny Depp's lawyer is the guy who had dealings with. Oleg Deripaska, who is in cahoots with fucking Paul Manafort. None of that has anything to do with this trial, okay? But it is funny that somehow Paul fucking Manafort finds his way into this story, okay? It he doesn't have anything to do with this, okay? That's what it says, Rhodes. It said it said Meshuga. I don't know. That's what it said in the article, okay? Fuck. So yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the the lawyer of one of Paul Manafort's bros and and massive all Russian oligarch is is the lawyer for Johnny Depp, which is just a little bit funny. Okay, just a little funny. Okay. Now there are a few more little things. There are a few more little things we need to watch. Okay. Um, this is, the, we're going to watch this little bit where they listen back to this audio recording, okay? This is the audio recording we listen to, and I want us to take a look at, at the way that they both react 43. to this, okay? And for the record, this is an audio recording, and we, it's, um, quite lengthy, so we intend to play certain portions of it. Okay. Any objection? No objection other than just, like, no what minute, second, portion. Okay, but the entire audio is in evidence, correct? Yes, sir. Any yes, objection? Sir. Okay, no. All right, and 343 If you'd like me to read the specific minutes now, or we can provide it to counsel afterwards. Okay, if you want now, or is it going to okay. uh, We intend to play minute 25, 37 seconds through 26, 28. Um, one hour and 57 minutes, 21 seconds through one hour, 58 minutes, 54 seconds. So okay. keep in mind now that these recordings are now officially in the court record. So these recordings that were released in the past are now officially a part of the record of the court. Two hours, 38 minutes, 52 seconds through, excuse me, two hours, 38, 52 seconds through two hours, 39 uh, minutes, 43 seconds. And then two hours, 46 minutes, one second through two hours, 47 minutes, 20 seconds. Those are four clips. Okay. Thank you. No problem, Is this audio? Yep. That's the promise you gave me a little while ago. I'm, I'm telling you, if you if you lost memory last night of kicking me out the door with the fucker hitting me, Again, and, you, and your memory is gone from uh, you kicking the, the bathroom door and hitting me in the skull as I was bent down. I Wait, sorry. if you have those memory uh, 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 fucking, you know, d did it. I was it. upset. There was a lot going okay, on, and I was in an ambient. Like, why, why are you obsessing over the fact I can't remember it the way you remembered it? I said I was sorry. Okay, I didn't deny I it. I'm not talking about that. What okay, okay. Right away. Immediately. 
Notice that this is a re this is a recording we haven't heard yet, and the first thing we see in the recording is yet another incident of Amber Heard claiming she doesn't remember doing something to Johnny Depp. Literally, immediately into the hallmarks of gaslighting. One of the th one of the forms that gaslighting takes most frequently in relationships is people claiming is people forgetting conflicts. This is one of the most textbook forms of gaslighting. You have a you're, you're in a in an abusive relationship. The abuser does something bad, and instead of admitting they were wrong, they say that they can't remember it. Now maybe they don't remember it. Maybe they they're conveniently forgetting. Maybe they really do remember it, but they're just lying. It doesn't really matter. The effect is the same. Denying that something that did happen didn't happen. Um, under undermines the abuse victim's sense of reality and can lead to them being further isolated, can lead to them feeling worse and worse and worse. Let's continue. It's, it's, it's not to get you mad, it's, not to get, it's just to, to get out of a bad situation while it's happening before it gets worse. In Australia, when we had the big fight where I lost the tip of my finger, at least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. To, to, so to, to escape, the, to escape the, the fight. You don't escape the fight, you escape the solution. No. You escape the solution. No. You escape figuring it out. We cannot work it out if you run away to the bathroom every time. Listen to me. Listen to me. A boxer can't go 12 rounds without a fucking minute break. I'm not, not giving you a minute break. You do it at minute three at the beginning of an argument. No. There are rounds, man. And when it gets too fucking hairy, the ref splits them apart or whatever. But I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is you, you, you can't have a solution if the argument just keeps mounting and mounting and mounting and mounting. I fucking go to the, into the bathroom and sit on the floor. Bam, bam, bam. Here you come. I come out. Fight, fight, fight. Crazy. Escalated. I go I split again. I go to another fucking bathroom or bedroom or something. Knock, knock, knock. Bang, bang, bang. You kept coming to get me. So this is yet another recording we hadn't heard before in which during this recording, Johnny explains how he was fleeing from room to room and being actively pursued by Amber. And Amber, in this conversation, n does not deny doing this and instead belittles him for attempting to escape. I'm not the one who fucking throws fucking pots and that's different. That's different. Else at me. That's different. That's what one does not negate the other. That's irrelevant. It's a complete non sequitur. Just because I have some pots and pants does not mean that you come yeah, and knock on the door. Just because there are bases does not mean that you come and knock on the door. Really, I just let you throw. I'm not saying that. You're saying that. You're putting words in my mouth and then making no, non sequiturs. Giving you a situation. No, you're trying to justify how you don't or do come to the door no, based I'm on whether I throw pots and pants. It's irrelevant. No, I'm justifying how you, you you seem to think that there's this cowardice in me that runs away and I don't fight for you. And you're justifying that by saying I throw pots and pants. Okay, cool. Let's no, talk about everything you do wrong. I'm not the one who. Holy shit. Now we heard that one before. I said to Travis, I said, no, I said to you, hey, tell Travis what just happened. You well, you told me to do it. You told me to, you said, go do that. I said, no, tell them what just happened. And I lied. And you punched me in You're the right. fucking thing. You, you figured it out. And you said, no, fuck it, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you lie. And then I didn't punch you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't. Uh, uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. I was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You know, even a lot of fights have been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah, no, I when you fucking have a close You didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you, you are such a baby. Grow the fuck up, Tony. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury what they just heard on those audio recordings? Um. What, what was just played on the audio recordings? So there's the audio. Now there's the audio we listened to earlier now being played in court.
So here we have a, let's do, uh, oh boy. I want to see some of these other ones because there's a lot of these. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of these clips. This is trial is going to keep going on and I'm sure we're going to get, um, we're, I'm sure we're going to get some more, um, you know, uh, uh, odd clips, but I want to, I want to look at this one. This is, this is a bit where the front desk employee, uh, testifies on the penthouse incident. So this is one of the incidents, and this is a third party testifying. Let's take a look at this real quick, and then we're going to move into the conversation side. How long have you been employed at the Eastern Columbia Approximately. Okay, never mind. This audio quality is impossible to deal with. No. Um, no, we're not going to do We're not actually going to watch that. I did not know the audio quality was that bad. Okay. Very sorry. So, um, so there's a whole... Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I don't think I can. I don't think we can listen to that. I apologize. Um, but there's a number of there's. Uh, let's see if we can get this right here. I want to see if we can grab the. Uh, where is it here? Where'd my thing go? Here we go. Paul Bettany's a good friend. We're gonna watch this little video right here, which is a couple of the highlights from the trial, and then we're going to move on to our discussion. We're going to talk about the different angles of this. And of course, if there's updates to this story, if there's more bombshells, we'll update it in the future. But so far, the good news is we're all caught up. You all know what has led up to this point now. So if you decide you want to continue following the trial, you'll be able to. Let's watch this real quick. You've done drugs with, right? That's a strange question. Um, Paul Bettany is a good friend. Yes. You've done drugs with him? Yes, I have. Cocaine? Right? Uh, cocaine, yes. Alcohol? Alcohol, yes. Pills, including Xanax and Adderall, right? Mm. That I'm not so sure of. Okay. Mr. Depp, you, you remember giving testimony in um, the trial in the UK, correct? Yes. And you gave that testimony under oath, right? Yes. Um, you, were, you, were, you gave quite a bit of testimony in that trial, right? Uh, sir, are you, uh, are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? Uh, let me check. I wouldn't be able to judge that myself. I don't, it felt like a lot. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of it. And you see that uh, on, on the bottom of that page, um, there's a discussion of, of Paul Bettany and, and the things, drugs that you did together. And there was a question. The question is, any sort of pills? And your answer is yes. There could have been Xanax, or if he needed, if he asked for Xanax or Adderall, whatever, I would, of course, give it to him. Question. So you would supply Paul Bettany with whatever medication or controlled drugs he asked for. Is that right? Answer. If he was feeling anxious or if he was feeling unpleasant, I would give him what he asked for. Question. Would you give him a Xanax? Answer. Yes. Did I read that right? You certainly did, yes, sir. And you shared, um, the two of you shared an enjoyment of controlled drugs or alcohol at that time, right? Um, the two of us were making a film uh, together. Um, with, with respect, sir, that, that wasn't my question. My question was, the oh. two of you shared an, an enjoyment of controlled drugs and alcohol at that time. Yes or no? At times. Yes. And Ms. Hurd was quite adamant that you didn't drink anymore and that you should stop using recreational drugs, right? Oh, yes. And she didn't like it when you were high on drugs or drunk on alcohol, right? She didn't like it when it was her perception that I was high on drugs. Her perception is quite different than the truth. And that's, that's what we're after is the truth. Mr. Depp, this, this is a text message exchange that you had with Paul Bettany on June 11th, 2013, correct? Yes, correct. You text Mr. Bettany, let's burn Amber, three excla exclamation points, right? You see that? I do see that. And at this time, June 11th, 2013, Amber is your girlfriend or, or perhaps even your fiance at this point, correct? Uh, yeah. Girlfriend, yep. for sure. After that, you made another comment. And, and I'd like to apologize to the court and to the jury for some of the language that I'm going to have to use today. But unfortunately, um, you're going to see a lot of documents with language like this. After you said, let's drown her before we burn her, Mr. Depp, you said, I will f her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she is dead. That's what you said that you would do after you burned her and after you drowned her. Did I read that right? You certainly did, yes. And you wrote that about the woman who would later become your wife. Yes, I did. On January 17th, 2013, Mr. Depp, you texted the following. For the idiot cow, three exclamation points. Next text. Will do. I'll smack the ugly f around before I let her in. Don't worry. Apologies again to the court and the jury for this language. And then you close by saying, did that worthless hooker arrive? Did I read that right? You did, sir. Um, one, one of your good friends that you've taken drugs with before is Marilyn Manson, right? Um, yes, we've taken... Uh, uh, we drank together. Uh, we've, we've, uh, we, we've had cocaine together maybe a couple of times. Um, pills, right? With Marilyn Manson? Um, I once gave uh, Marilyn Manson a pill uh, so that he would... Stop talking so much. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, I get it. And on line 22, 
You were asked a question the night before you were due to meet up. Did you have a heated discussion on the telephone Bazinga. about what was happening with James Franco, the scene she was doing with James, James Franco? Answer, I do not recall, but it is highly likely. Did I read that right? In fact, I'm not sure where you are. Uh, okay. Um, day sorry. two, page 293. It's on page 32 of the document. Line 22, I think is the issue. Page 32, line 22. Thank you, Your Honor. Line 22. Line okay. 22 on page 32. Yes. Too many, too, too many numbers. Are you there? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, yes, so yes, right. question. The night before you were due to meet up, did you have a heated discussion on the telephone with Ms. Hurd about what was happening with James Franco, the scene she was doing with James Franco? Answer, I do not recall, but it is highly likely. Did I read that right? You, you did. And you suspected that Amber was having an affair with James Franco, correct? That was the reason for your argument. Um... Yeah, yes. Let's do this. So is it your testimony that right after you cut your finger off, that you, or right after, I won't give you anything to argue with me yet, right after you sustained an injury to your finger, Sorry. that you, right after you sustained an injury. Yeah, it was a, that was a good catch, buddy. That was a good catch. Did you see that? Did you see that little slippery thing right there? Fucking object to that right there. He caught himself. Ooh. Through your finger. Is it your testimony that you did not ask for cocaine and ecstasy? Right after you told the doctor about your finger injury. Is that your testimony? Um, <clears throat> regardless of what date you believe works within the world time zone, um, I don't believe that someone who has gone through uh, opiate dependency, who has lost the ability uh, to, to produce dopamine and serotonin in their own body, because um, that's what the opiate does. Your body no longer needs to make the dopamine or the serotonin. The dopamine and serotonin, as you know, I imagine, are um, things that keep us... Um, in, 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 it gives us our moves. It gives I, us I appreciate that, but my question wasn't that. My question was, I'm just right trying after to you told you the doctor about your finger injury, you were asking for cocaine. It's, it's entirely possible that you were asking for cocaine and ecstasy. Objection. Yes or no? Speculation. I'll, I'll allow that question. Answer uh, Clearly, uh, need whitey, more whitey stuff um, is, is, is uh, yes, it's a reference to cocaine, but that doesn't, uh, there's nothing here that says that I ingested the drug. Not saying there is, but you were asking for more cocaine and you were asking for more ecstasy, correct? I wasn't asking for more ecstasy. I was asking for ecstasy because that was what I was requested from. Was requested by Ms. Hurd. This is this is where you tell Amber in a recording that you, you mentioned the day I chopped my finger off. So let's listen to that. Wait, you're talking about, I don't I'm talking about Australia. The day that now I we're talking about Australia. Off. Okay. Yeah. You hear that? You said the day I chopped my finger off. Let's let's play it again. Let's That'd be great. Thank you. Wait, you're talking about, I don't I'm talking about Australia. The day that now we're talking about Australia. Australia. Okay. Are, are you sure that's? Yeah, let's do it one more time. Or is it the day that I got my finger chopped off? No, no, you say the day that I chopped my finger off. So let's play it one more time because I think I left out the word that. It says the day that I chopped my finger off. Wait, you're talking about, I don't I'm talking about Australia. The day that now I'm talking about Australia. Okay. I'm not so sure. In fact, earlier you had quoted Jerry Judge from uh, the airplane tape is calling me a um, wait till he falls asleep. And I'm positive that those words never left his mouth because he was, he would have, if I would have been making those noises in the bathroom, he would have ripped the hinges off. Maybe they left his mouth when you were passed out, sir, respectfully. Let's listen to this one more time. I'll sustain his argument and I'll move to strike. Can you please bring up Defendant's Exhibit 638? That's a stretch. That right there is a hell of a stretch. To try and say that that mumbling is him admitting to cutting his finger off? That is the most dog shit stretch I've ever seen. Do you see why there's a lot of sussy nonsense in this? Do you see why a lot of people feel really sussy about the way that this is unfolding? Also, Neo Israfil says, I didn't realize opiate dependence causes dopamine to stop being made. Yes. Uh, op one of the reason why opiates are so bad is because they burn out your body's ability to naturally produce serotonin and dopamine. Um, that's why opiate addiction is, is one of the reasons why opiate addiction is so bad um, is because it permanently damages your ability. Like you can't, you, you can never, like it's very difficult after opiate addiction um, to like get back to a standard, like standard mood regulation. It's just a down, it is just a side effect of, of heavy opiate use. That's why you got to be careful and not get addicted to opiates if you can avoid it. Unfortunately, a lot of people do because of pain pills. And you know, if you are prescribed pain pills and use them properly, you can still get addicted very easily. Anyway, let's continue. I'm sorry, what, what is, are we going to this into evidence, sir? Yes, Your Honor, move for the admission of this video into evidence. We have no objection. Ryoma says, Mama, why are all celebrities coked up constantly? Um, well, if you want the real answer, it's because they can afford to be. Everybody else in America would also be coked up all the time if they could afford to be, but they can't. Um, uh, 
keep in mind that like celebrities uh lifestyle is incredibly fucked up most of them overwork themselves to death and then have like periods of extreme luxury in between but the average american works themselves just as hard but never gets the time to rest in between like a celebrity does celebrities every single time they're not on a movie set um they can go live in extreme luxury but the truth still remains that a lot of celebrities most of the time are working like crazy to get to that position in the first place um even if they end up being crazy rich in response but yeah anyway let's continue Actually, Your Honor. All right, 638 in evidence. Thank you. Negative motion. Ah. What happened? What happened? Let's listen to this one more time. I'm sustained. Yeah, the strike. This video and evidence. We have no objection, Your Honor. All right, six three eight in evidence. Thank you. Negative motion. Ah. What happened? What happened? Nothing happened to you this morning. Yeah, you're right. I just woke up and you were so sweet and nice. We we're not even fighting this morning. All I did was say sorry. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. Um, no, that's the thing. You want to see crazy? Okay. Oh, you're crazy. Are you crazy? Yeah, have you drunk this whole thing this morning? Oh, you got this thing? You got this no, going? Oh, really? Yes. Really? We have a date for this um in your house illegally recorded tape. Mother Mirset asks, have you seen the clip of the lawyer objecting to his own witness? No, but if you have that, we can watch it. Please send it to me if you have it. Or anything why don't we let's since, since you have some questions about it, let's why don't we watch it again? Oh, I've let's seen it. Again, okay, we, you know what we, we can we don't have to do that. No, that's good. We don't have to do that. This is at your house in West Hollywood on Sweetser Avenue, correct? That's correct, sir. And that's you in the video, Mr. Depp, right? That's correct, sir. And you would agree that you were violent in that clip, correct? Um, clearly, I was having a bad time. I don't, uh, I don't know what it was with regard to completely at this point, since I don't know the date. But um, um, being legally recorded by your um, chosen other is, uh, well, it's quite fitting with the rest of the photographs and tape recordings she made. So um, I thought what was most interesting is that she <clears throat> tried to hide it from me, and then that she laughed and smiled at the end. I thought that was the most interesting part myself but so yes you I, I did assault um a couple of cabins but i did not touch miss hurt and as you can see i think you know and you may have been he does bring up a good point you may have been may have been drunk in that video correct there's a possibility of that yes sir you, you poured yourself a um a mega pint of red wine correct a mega pint <laughs> yeah I poured myself a large glass of wine. Right. I thought it necessary. And what I would propose to play is 3210 to 3805. So we'll make it 586A, yes. section 3210 through 3805, right? That's yes. Thank, so, you. thank you. And with your permission, I'd ask uh, for us to play this okay. to the jury. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, but before we start, Mr. Depp, during this meeting that you had with her, at one point, you tried to cut yourself with a knife, correct? I don't call that, no. Okay, let's play this. I mean, thing. I might have uh, made a move. That was a conversation. We did, we did, before Torvo, yes. We talked about the reason why it's not necessarily... I don't know if we're going to get to see the video here. Mm -hmm. Show us the video. 
Do I want to cut you? No, no, I want just. No. Let me this off. No, no, I'm coming. Just don't cut your skin. Please do not cut your skin. Please don't. Okay. Why don't would I do that? It's easy. No, please do not do that. Please do not do that. Don't. Please don't. Please don't cut yourself. You don't need to cut yourself. I need to do what I want. I know. I know it hurts. Don't say. Tell me. I know what you want. No, thank you. No, thank you. This on the pillows. Come here. You know that will. Come here. Oh, he's a visual. That's ridiculous. He's a f***ing prick. Don't, don't. Please don't. Don't cut yourself. Please don't cut yourself. Please don't cut yourself. Please don't cut yourself. I would never cut you. I would never do that to you. Please don't. These are the sorts of things where you can never... What are we supposed to pull away from this? What is anyone supposed to pull away from this? What it seems like... What it seems like to me is that Herd's... Amber Heard's lawyer wants people want people to perceive Johnny Depp and maybe I'm wrong but we're going to talk about this it seems to me like they want him to they want to sell him as like a crazy junkie who does self-harm and cuts himself all the time and that she's just like trying to save him but we don't have anything to actually prove that all this is is slightly spooky audio with no video and we don't know Don't, 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 don't. don't me. Please don't do that. Don't. Put, put the knife down. Don't. Just put the knife down. Don't. Don't do that. Do not do that, Tony. Please do that. look at you. You're gonna hurt yourself. Please I stop. look at you. Wait, stop. Please There's don't. There's a way for the pain to go away. Listen, it's not that. It doesn't make it go away, trust me. Yeah. It do now. It doesn't make it go away. Really? Did it make it go away? Yeah. It did? Please don't. Please don't do that. Okay. There's luck here. There's luck here. There's luck here. Over here. I know the reason to be here. really dull and it would be the worst thing in the world to use to cut no, me with <clears throat> it would be too <clears throat> painful and dull and dirty to use yeah, it right it's pretty <coughs> no no please do not do not do don't 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 you're gonna hurt yourself don't it's okay please don't, please don't cut yourself please please don't please stop please stop please <coughs> don't don't hurt yourself please no i don't hurt myself at all Your Honor, I think I might, if it's okay with Your Honor, I'm probably going to move on to something else. Okay, uh, next, okay I assume you still have quite a bit cross, or? A, a bit. I'm not, not exactly sure. All right, but more than we could do. Yes. Okay, all right, that's fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we've come to the end of our week. All right, so those are some of the clips from this hearing. All right, so now, everybody, we, we you now are familiar with the history. You're, you're familiar with everything um, that, that has happened up to this date within reason. And now it's time for us to talk about the takes, okay? Let's talk about all the different aspects. So this is the discussion section. For those of you who aren't familiar with Drama Mama, we do Drama Mama is a long form deep dive into 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 big drama. And then at the end, we do a sort of a roundup. Can you hear the ice cream? Is there an ice cream truck out there? I can't. Is there an ice cream truck out there? There could be. Anyway. <clears throat> Gotta be honest, I was not paying any attention, so I still have no idea what's going on. That's your fault, not mine. Pay attention. Wake the fuck up. All right. So let's talk about the things that have happened so far. Okay. So first off, we have the initial allegations. 
Now, inevitably, one of the things that's going to come up in this conversation is that there are a lot of people who really wanted this situation to be representative of a political issue. Now, we talk about this all the time. There are all kinds of cases where where we see a interpersonal dispute become representative of a political issue, sometimes more appropriately than others. But I think one thing that we can all admit is that in the modern in the modern age of the internet, there is at least some pressure to make to sort of politicize every single issue that we see. You see this. Um, there's a lot of like, I mean, God, you've seen everybody's seen the articles that are like um, the best. Here, let me give an example of this. One of the best examples of this. Remember the um, remember the like man spreading article that was written by BuzzFeed. You guys remember that? Remember where it was like. Uh, it was like a picture of a guy and it was like some BuzzFeed journalist who went around taking pictures of dudes spreading their legs um, too wide on the subway. And then they were like, this is representative of like patriarchy. You know what I mean? Remember that article? And like all of the people got got super mad about it. That's the sort of example of what I'm talking about. It's a an attempt to turn every single issue that could be commentated on into an overarching, almost universal political issue. Um, you know, dudes spreading their legs on the subway isn't just, uh, you know, dudes being selfish and taking up more space and being arrogant. Instead, it's representative of of the patriarchy. Um, and you see this a lot. And like I said, there are some cases where this is more um, uh, more sensical than others. Um, the, the least sensical being like the man spreading type article and the most sensical being like a court case that involves a, like directly a political issue. And I mean, for example, I would say that like an example of of the political issue being very relevant is the Harvey Weinstein situation, the original Me Too, the the Me Too situation um, in which m numerous women came out to talk about the fact that Harvey Weinstein raped and abused them by using his position as a producer in Hollywood to force them to take actions they didn't want to take, to put them in horrible positions, and to violate them. That is an example of a issue that is both interpersonal and political. It is extremely emblematic that one of the most prolific producers in the entire world, one of the most rich and famous and, and powerful entertainment figures in the world, is also directly enacting a patriarchal domineering rape culture uh rape culture around him that is very fitting but as we can see not every situation directly maps onto a sort of broader politics very easily and this is one of those cases where I think that the entire thing has been hurt by the attempt for people to tie in broader politics. Let's just map this real quick. Um, so this, let's just sort of map what the sort of political statements that people have claimed. I'm going to just bring this up real quick. We're going to type this out, okay? And we're going to look at this together because, you know, that's what we do here. So we have a couple of different things here. Let's zoom this up just a bit. Okay, so in 2016, Johnny Depp was, uh, or sorry, let's say Amber hashtag me tooed Johnny Depp. And this became very quickly emblematic of issues uh with feminism um with patriarchy and you had people on both sides of this so you had people who jumped in saying things like this oh So this is what I would say. So for some people, the Me Too of Johnny Depp was was summed up as women be lying. 
I'm, I'm serious. That is the position that a lot of people take. There are a lot of dudes who basically, whose basic approach to all of this really, really, really is, um, women be lion. And, um, and, and they, there's, I mean, this is, this is all over the place, right? This is the scare behind like title nine, you know, protections. The reason why like people, Betsy DeVos was cited in one of these articles as being somebody who was actively pushing to make it harder for victims to get justice. And the truth is, I'm sorry, but I want you all to pay attention here. Like it or not, the simple statistical truth is that the vast majority of rapes go unreported and and the ones that are reported, the majority of those never are, are never even fully investigated. We know this to be true. We know that rapes are almost impossible to actually prosecute, especially in our current system. The truth is a lot of people get away with sexual abuse. And that is, and a lot, and a lot of the victims, the, the majority of the victims of sexual abuse are indeed, as it turns, as it seems to be women. There's a number of reasons for this. There's no doubt. There, there could be no doubt about this. Okay. Just let's be clear about that. This is simply true. Um, and it is overwhelmingly painful how much sexual abuse is dished out on women in our society. Um, um, so this response of, of like the women be lying response is incredibly, incredibly wrong, bad faith and harmful. This is why you get terms like believe women. Okay. The idea of believe women does not mean that women don't ever lie. The term believe women means that statistically, if someone comes forward to you about a story of abuse, the chances are they are not lying. The chances are they're telling you the truth because there's very, very little to be gained from lying about abuse. And there's a lot to be lost in coming out about abuse. People who come out about abuse often are subject to even further abuse. It's very bad. It's one of the reasons that we, that we have so much sexual violence in our society. So this argument, this, this group of people who always show up and always defend the guy. Remember, there were people who defended Louis C.K. There are people right now who defend Bill Cosby. There are people who defend Trump right now who literally just think, ah, yeah, the bitches made it up. And they don't actually think that. They just say that because it's convenient for them. Nuts, you're an idiot on this. I'm sorry. I, I love you, but you're kind of an idiot on this. Everybody just weird champ nuts in advance, okay? Okay? I understand. I understand that you want to, like, you want to be the, the based meninist and whatever in chat, that you want to be, like, like Mr. Men's Rights or whatever fucking bullshit. But the truth is that that's, like, st that, like, it... It's really a stupid argument. The people who the people who are like on the side of this who just immediately sided with Johnny Depp are just as stupid as the people who double down in siding with um, Amber Heard. Truly, it's a very stupid position. Okay, the truth is that there is very little benefit for the vast majority. No one said, oh my God, nuts. Do you listen at all? I literally explicitly addressed that. God, why do you do this? God, it's so fucking annoying. Um, fuck. Anyway, uh, uh, I, I literally, this is the thing. Do you see what I'm talking about? Anyway, fuck. Okay. Um, I literally specifically said that believe victims has nothing to do with literally believing that women can't lie, but rather that by and large, there is no reason for people, there is no benefit for people to lie about sexual abuse. So you should believe people when they come forward. You should take their side and be willing to hear them out, be willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. That's what it means. It's about it's about it's about encouraging people to give people the benefit of the doubt. Specifically young people. Keep in mind that um children guys, I want you to listen really really seriously for just a second, okay? Listen. Listen. Children, did you know this, that, ch that, that children who have been the victims of sexual assault, 
they often do tell people that they've been harmed, but usually those family members don't listen. It's shockingly common for young people to tell their families about being sexually abused by someone only to have their family not listen. This is where the actual believe victims thing comes from. Believe victims comes from the fact that children are often, children and women, specifically uh, young women, are often considered to just be liars, that they're making it up, even though statistically they're not. And they have nothing to gain from telling it. But a culture that we have in our society that does not believe victims leads to victims being ignored constantly, the vast majority of the time. Oh, uh, just right here is fine, Mother Mirset. Just tag me right here. My uh, Saxy Jax says, my best friend was abused and got told that it couldn't have happened because it was the guidance counselor's grandfather. Hmm. Isn't that weird? There is an unbelievable problem in our society with abuse victims being ignored, with abuse victims bringing their abuse to the light and being ignored. Thank you very much. We'll take a look at this in just a second. Um, so, yes. Thank you very much, Mother Mirset. Appreciate that. Um, so, there is a problem there is a serious problem with victims not being believed in our society. And even if a victim lies, that doesn't mean that it isn't worth it for us to have a, a cultural, a sort of passive social policy of believing victims. And, and again, especially because believing victims doesn't mean putting somebody in jail. It doesn't mean jump killing someone over it. It means being willing to hear out and grant the benefit of the doubt to the victim. Okay? All right. Let's get back to this. So, in 2016, the Amber Heard Me Too jo Amber Heard Me Too's Johnny Depp. Some people see this as emblematic of issues with feminism. Some people see this emblematic of issues with the patriarchy. You know, men rule everything and get away with murder. Now, as we can see, this is clearly not what happened. So even though I would generally agree that there are huge issues with men statistically running next to everything in the world and often literally getting away with rape and murder. That doesn't mean that this particular case is a good example of that. And this is why I say that people need to be careful about sort of extrapolating every single celebrity event that happens into a greater political issue. Because in this case, everybody looks really fucking dumb. Because what happened, of course, immediately is that we move on to 2019, or sorry, to 2020. So a few years later, 2020, we see Johnny Depp, uh, a Johnny Depp audio clears Johnny. So this was the message that everybody got in 2020. In 2020, the audio came out and everybody's like, look at this. Look at these guys were right. Women do be lying. So the result of this is, of course, we get, wow, look, women do be lying. And then we get the other side of, peep, of things saying, no, no, Amber Heard did nothing wrong. Uh, Johnny was putting her in an impossible situation. And you can see right here that both of these are really bad because the conclusion wasn't that women are lying, but rather that Amber Heard was lying. And then the, on the other side, people who are in this position, the men rule everything and get away with murder, have to bend themselves backwards to try and defend somebody who is very obviously an abuser. Okay?
Okay, guys, just please. Okay, nuts, nuts. This is for your own good. This is for your own good. There you go. Shh, 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 shh. This is for your own good, nuts. All right. All right, let's continue. Whew. Okay, so now we're 2022. And now we have complete, complete and utter madness. Okay? So, because now that we're on this trial, we have, so now we have some people claiming videos, audio of Johnny Depp proves he was a piece of shit. Some people claiming videos, audio of Amber Heard proves she was a piece of shit. Now watch this. And therefore, patriarchy and men, men get away. And down here, and therefore, women be lying. Do you see? Do you see what I'm talking about? Now, the thing is, there actually are some aspects of this, I think, that could be talked about that are really important. And I want to explain a couple of those. So the first off of this is I want you to notice how, um, how Amber has used, specifically, how Amber Heard has used social justice as a way to gain for many years a favorable position and i mean that um amber has not amber heard has not been removed from films like johnny depp has even though even though none of this has been proven this is all hearsay the fact that um the fact that amber heard was until 2020 able to coast on me too should make people who support me too and should make people who believed amber heard very very frustrated and the reason for that is because me too was correct the me too movement is correct men are in hollywood in a that there are lots of men in positions of incredible power and and being a woman in hollywood puts you at a significant disadvantage in most cases but of course, that doesn't mean that every that doesn't mean that you can just sort of backwards calculate that every case will look like a political stereotype. In this case, uh, Amber Heard was able to Amber Heard was able to take advantage of a pre-existing political and a pre-existing accurate political stereotype and use that to hide her own wrongdoings. And, as a result, was able to avoid due scrutiny. And that's very fucked up. And it's, and it's really shitty. Because now we can see that, indeed, in this situation, Johnny Depp was being hurt. Johnny Depp, in fact, and now there's no way we're ever going to know if Johnny was also abusive. In fact, in all of this, it really does seem... Like, there is a lot of mutual abuse going on. Their relationship seems incredibly, incredibly messy. However, however, I will note that Amber Heard admitted on video to hitting Johnny Depp multiple times. And Johnny Depp, to this day, ref, re, 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 denies that he did any such hitting, except in explicit self-defense. It's worth something to note because so far we haven't found any evidence of Johnny Depp doing anything, but we have admissions from Amber that she was abusive. 
So I want you to recognize how this sort of political manipulation can indeed, in some cases, affect uh, a case because it can. It absolutely, it absolutely is possible for a a abusive individual to manipulate a political sentiment, a political movement for their own personal gain. Now, of course, there's conservatives all over the place who are ex what I would consider to be conspiratorial and paranoid about this sort of thing. But what I think this proves is the need for people to be measured and careful about their sort of political conclusions. Because I think that what can happen is that when there's too much of a uh, when there's too much gusto or when there's too much uh, zeal or whatever you want to call it, to make every single celebrity issue a, a, a representation of political struggles at the time is that you run the risk of, of exactly what happened here, which is that everybody looks bad and the situation only gets worse. Keep in mind, um, Johnny Depp being, uh, Johnny Depp not being the one or sorry, 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 I should say, in this case, Johnny Depp not being the, the, the man abuser doesn't make all of the other men abusers in Hollywood disappear. It just means that in this particular case, Johnny Depp wasn't guilty of the thing. That doesn't change the circumstance there, but it certainly makes it harder to believe the stories of people who are coming out. What I'm trying to say is that somebody lying like this hurts the credibility of other people. And it's unfortunate, but it's true, especially when it's this high profile. And I think that in cases like this, there is genuine, there is a genuine need to, uh, to, to, to call out the, the improper use of a political movement of, of an important political movement. For one's own gain. Now, of course, it's impossible to read anybody's intentions, but I can't help but feel like looking back on all this, it's pretty clear that Amber was confident that she could use the Me Too movement to basically cover up her own involvement in their horrible, abusive marriage. And I know from having been on the internet, I know how much people hated Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, a lot of people right now, it, like a lot of you right now, if I asked you before this coverage, you probably would have said, what, didn't Johnny Depp beat his wife? And as it turns out, we don't know if that's true, but we do know that his wife beat him. So it's not, it's not very hard in this particular circumstance to point out that Johnny Depp's reputation has been harmed, that Johnny Depp has been done wrong in the public eye. However, I don't think that Amber Heard's op-ed is really incorrect. Earlier, we read Amber Heard's op-ed, the title of this op-ed being, one moment, uh, it's this one. I'm sorry. <clears throat> the title being, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change. Did you know it is possible for someone to lie about the facts of their own life experience and nonetheless still correctly document what happened to them? So let me ask you this. Two people come forward with sexual assault allegations. One of them is telling the truth. The other one is lying. Both of them are treated horribly by the populace. What, does it do, does the fact that one of them was lying change the fact that both of them were treated horribly by the populace? Easy answer. Nope, it doesn't. It is true. Our culture does not know how to handle sexual assault allegations. Our culture is fucking terrible a lot of a lot of women who come forward with with credible allegations of sexual assault are immediately uh, abused and stalked into silence it is actually absurd the degree to which uninvolved parties will sign up just to harass people that they think are lying whores because women be lying that is a massive massive problem in our culture even if 
Amber Heard was lying. But there's another thing I want to point out in this, because this is not the only political takeaway um, from here that I uh, that I wanted to uh, that I want to talk about. Towards the end of this, I brought up a very weird thing that I noticed, which is that Johnny Depp's or, or sorry, sorry, Amber Heard's lawyer uh, appears to be making the argument essentially that Johnny Depp is a drug addict and therefore must be an abuser. Okay, multiple sections from the sort of um, uh, from the cross examination, from the questioning of of the witnesses and the uh, and the defendant and the and the um, pro uh, prosecution. I can't remember. Um, those in in that section, there was a number of seg segments where all the lawyer was asking is whether or not Johnny Depp used drugs. And in fact, it was quite invasive, getting so far as to literally um, asking him what he asked his doctors for. Now, guys, that's fucked up, okay? That's really, really fucked up because um, uh, it, it's extremely fucked up to me that like um, one of the ways by which people regularly get accused falsely of crimes is by implying that they're a druggie it's weird people think that just because you have an addiction that makes you a bad person did you know like do you know how many people in america are addicted to drugs addiction is a silent killer most of the time you don't know that that people that you meet are addicted to drugs because they can keep it quiet because nobody else knows. Because as it turns out, there's all kinds of drugs you can take without anybody noticing. Addiction is a disease. Addiction is something that people struggle with and that they can't, they don't have full control over. It's not like people choose to be an addict. Yeah, some people engage in undue risk, uh, risky behavior that puts them in trouble, but that doesn't matter. Being an addict in and of itself, being addicted to a substance doesn't make you a bad person. However, I want you to point out, I want to point out how many people think that it is. There are a lot of people who, if they find out that you do any drugs, even though almost everyone does some type of drug, they will consider you of low moral character. And that will also uh, influence juries that are that suffer from the same biases as the rest of society, will, it can convince juries to convicting people uh, at a lower threshold of evidence because, simply because, they're addicted to drugs. Now, I find this really problematic. And it's interesting to me how much for not just in this trial, but over the course of years, Amber, Amber Heard, who was also doing lots of drugs, fixated on Johnny Depp's use of drugs to sort of Portray him as a troubled, drug-addicted person. And to many people, that made it plausible that he was an abuser. And I'll note, even though she was doing drugs too. Isn't that weird? Isn't it weird how um, if you could manage to convince people that your opponent is a, a drug addict and that you just do drugs once in a while, that you're like, oh, I have fun at a party, but my but my opponent is a drug addict, that a lot of people will see that as a character flaw. They will see that as a moral failing. E and even though we can acknowledge that drug addiction is, is, is a very, very complicated set of things, let me give you an example. Do you know how a lot of people get addicted to opioids? It's not because of heroin. It, it's not. The most abused um, drugs are prescription drugs. Drugs that people get because they're dealing with surgical pain. They're dealing with recovery. They're dealing with an injury. They're recovering from an injury and they get the pain medication and they become addicted from the pain medication, from legal prescribed pain medication something that's very easy but here's the thing in our system in america and in a couple of other countries um our system doesn't really support you uh dealing with pain well it doesn't support pain management it doesn't 
our, our coverages don't provide pain management well. So they just give you some drugs and then you're on your own once the drugs run out. And the reality is that some people become chemically dependent by the time they're done legally taking the drugs and then they're shit out of luck. And I don't know if you know this, but opioid withdrawals are very, very harsh. They make you feel like you're dead. They literally burn out your ability, your body's ability to feel good at all. If you are, if you take um, opioids for too long, it will literally damage your body's ability to process and absorb uh, serotonin and dopamine. So the reason I'm bringing all of this up is because I think it's very telling and also very shitty that a enormous portion of our society um, was willing to, uh, to, um, was willing to immediately condemn Johnny Depp because, um, because he's a man who's a drug addict. And I think that's pretty fucked up, guys. I think it's pretty fucked up, and I do think it's somewhat emblematic of a, of a, of a larger political issue, that it was so easy for people to believe that Johnny Depp was an abuser without ever really hearing his side of the story, without ever really considering, first of all, that maybe the drugs don't have anything to do with it, and two, that maybe it wasn't fair to assume that he couldn't be a victim because he was a man. And I want to point something else out, which is that Johnny Depp has insisted from the beginning that he was the victim of abuse. He's been coming out about this since the beginning, and basically nobody heard his side of the story. Until those uh, until the audio came out, there was very little support outside of the women be lying. The misogynist faction, all the conservatives, etc., obviously they will always side with the man. But outside of conservative, outside of women be lying types, outside of that type of person, there was very little support for the idea that Johnny Depp could have been a victim. And that is a problem in our society. That's a big problem. The idea that men cannot be victims, the idea that boys cannot be victims is incredibly fucked up. And also, it's interesting that this appears even in one of the videos, or sorry, even in one of the audio recordings. In one of the audio recordings, Amber Heard repeatedly calls Johnny Depp a pussy, um, calls him weak because he said he did not like getting physically hit by his wife. That is right there the the sign of a culture that does not believe that men can be victims. And I think that's really bad. I think that's really bad. So to wrap this up on a final note, um, I think it's very personally, I think it's very likely that this was a mutually abusive relationship um i think there's a lot of evidence that um both of them were very hurtful to one another even in the videos and audios that was um that was shown there um i mean we saw the video of johnny slamming glass around and um and you know getting pretty fucking rough he was broke glass he was sla slamming things around he was throwing objects that is a very unhealthy environment to live in um, I have lived in a house where objects were thrown, where uh, doors were slammed and windows were slammed regularly, where there was a lot of shouting and swearing and insulting, where there was a lot of physical hitting going on as well. Um, and um, it's really hard to exist around that at all. I, I think it's not unreasonable to believe that there was mutual abuse going on here. However, what troubles me is the way that people talk about this. Obviously, the obvious critique of stuff like this is to say, like, hey, um, guys, like, we should we should be careful about spectacleizing everybody's personal lives. But these are celebrities. Their lives are in the public sphere, and it is absolutely fucked up the way that people think about and treat celebrities. It is weird to gawk. But beyond that, maybe we should be a little bit less hasty to um, tying everything into a larger political issue before the evidence is out. I think that it's pretty reasonable um, 
it was pretty reasonable for some people to assume that Johnny Depp uh, uh, was was not uh, was not a uh, uh, a good partner. But I think that it's very weird to me that so many people were completely unwilling to consider that Johnny Depp could have been victimized, that Johnny Depp could have been um, could have been victimized and that he might have a side in the story. Even like I personally don't think it's like I don't think it's a hot take to, to find out that like, oh, uh, ex celebrity uh, beat his wife like guys, no offense, but like abuse is rampant in in in. Uh, uh, you know, domestic abuse is rampant in Hollywood just like it is everywhere else. It's not that hard to believe that, like, oh, an actor abuses abuses his wife. But why is it so hard to believe that the wife may have abused her husband as well? I don't know. I feel that it's concerning that that's the kind of thing. And I also find it concerning the way with which the court system attempts to weaponize addiction. I find that really upsetting. Because guess what? That... The way that the court system weaponizes addiction, Johnny Depp is the least person to worry about that. Because you want to know who really has that weaponized against them? Trans people, sex workers, black people, uh, 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 Latino people. Those all these are all groups of people who have this shit weaponized against them every single day in court. Literally, um, drug addicts receive so much, so much worse treatment in, in the, uh, judicial system, even if the addiction had nothing to do with their crime. Just for being an addict, juries and judges frown upon you. Imagine, imagine if that was anything else. Imagine if it was like, because you're diabetic, you get a, you get, you, you're more likely to be accused of a crime. That would be absurd. We should treat the same thing for addiction as well. Yeah, because people see being an addict at all as being a criminal, but it isn't. It isn't. Your people get addicted to drugs for all kinds of reasons. And it's very rarely recreational. It sometimes starts as uh it, it's it sometimes becomes recreational it sometimes starts as recreational but it's never that the whole way through it's reagan era philosophy of course it is bootstrapping and uh and personal responsibility but also it goes beyond that because it's not just a matter of bootstrapping and personal responsibility it comes to a denial of what drugs actually do People, I guess some people really grab, really struggle with the idea that some things can become out of our control. But the truth is, is that drug addiction is very difficult for an individual to control. Once you get to a certain point, it's very difficult to go back from that point. All right, does that make sense? I agree, Sparkle Cat. But I was trying to respond to uh, what a lot of people claim. Yes. Uh, th yes. Neo Israfil says a lot of people see addicts as dirty on the inside. Yes. They see that as um, there are some people who see being addicted to uh, anything at all as a fundamental moral failing that makes you a worse person and therefore less deserving of justice. It's a very fucked up mental uh, framework and it is remarkably common. Yep. So. The takeaway from all of this, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp appear to have been involved in a extremely, extremely abusive uh, uh, relationship. There appears to have been some level of abuse in either direction, but I will note that to date, as of right now, as of the creation of this video, only Amber has admitted to physically abusing Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp has denied all charges of physical abuse and no evidence of physical abuse has been uh brought forward so i want people to think about that and keep this up in mind can we come up with a better term for people that don't do drugs than straight edge i don't know i think that people should take this as a lesson to be a little more careful there are all kinds of ways to talk about politics that don't involve making careless projections onto somebody's personal life. And on a high profile case like this, it is especially important that we keep our politics, uh, that we keep our politics in check. 
and I don't mean that to be like apolitical. I just mean, please try to avoid projecting narratives onto developing stories. It's very, like, it's not a hard thing to do to refrain from projecting a political narrative onto a story that hasn't yet been, uh, uh, that hasn't yet unfolded in full. Johnny admitted admitted to accidentally headbutting her. Sorry about that, but that was that is not uh, that is not him admitting to abuse. You should just say yeah. He did technically admit he did admit to that, but that but he did not admit to uh, intentionally doing so. Now, of course, it is very possible that, like I said, my personal theory my personal theory is that this was a mutually abusive relationship, and they probably hit each other back and forth. But it does seem to me like there is a no there is notable evidence that Amber was the aggressor in a lot of cases and that she seemed to think that she was justified in being the aggressor because Johnny was a pussy who wouldn't solve his problems. And I think that's fucked up. He admitted to throwing things at he admitted to throwing something back. Anyway, um, that is my final takeaway for the time being. I hope you enjoyed this particular installation of Drama Mama. Uh, we talked about a lot of these issues. We touched on all of them. You now are all caught up. You can follow the trial now. And if there are any major developments, we will update it right here on my channel.